Hello, and welcome back to the BESL Season 3 and to the Rocket League. Big thank you to uh, Boney and Heku, by the way. Lovely to see you uh, both back from TwitchCon. Hope you had a lovely time. Uh, and, well, I'm having a lovely time here, certainly in the UK. The, the weather finally heating up after what was a bit of a cold spell. And, oh goodness me, the action is heating up here in the Rocket League as well. Uh, today, I think we've got really interesting stories coming up. Uh, last week was the week of the sweeps. This week, we could potentially see as many as two teams all but out with a chance of going through to the Live Land final at Hypertown. More on that later, but let's introduce ourselves. I'm Ira Leek, joined by the wonderful Jar of Jam, uh, Latvia's finest, and Jam, uh, as I said, two teams in particular I'm looking at this week. Spectre and Scavenge both play two series this week, unprecedented, uh, and especially for the likes of Spectre, every game from here on out is a crunch game. If they don't win, they can pretty much kiss their chances goodbye of going to Hypertown. And you can say that again, crunch time for Spectre, as up until this point, they haven't won a single game. That's not just series, mm. a single game. Uh, even Ram Ranch, who's currently uh, in, at the bottom of, this, of the league table, uh, still have one to their name. And you said that last week, that one game might be just all the difference, uh, especially if the if the things go really close. Because right now we have three teams sitting in the middle of the table with a 1-1 result. And this, uh, this bracket, this uh, rather gauntlet, rather, that will be awaiting mm -hmm. both Spectre and Scavenge Esports today will prove really which one of these teams is capable of uh, staying above the rest. Of course, as always, we have four series uh, for your entertainment today. So let's take a little look at what we've got coming up, Jam. As I said, Spectre and Scavenge, to a lot of guys at home, will, will stick out as having an unprecedented two series to contest this week. Our first match of the day, a real interesting clash between the two of them, bottom of the table versus Scavenge, who are in this midfield fight to try and get into the top four. Spectre are then up again, up against post-game strong, who had an amazing week number two, so riding high in confidence. Our third game is Ram Ranch, another one of those teams down at the bottom. You'd have to say that they really need to be looking for a win against one of the better teams this so far this season, the Backflip Boys, uh, to potentially progress further up the order. The Backflip Boys, though, might have a bit of a, a problem in the way that they've got a sub coming in again this week. Again, we'll talk more about that later on in the show. And then our match of the week, Scavenge Esports versus Mind Games Esports. It could be a case of Scavenge fully cementing themselves in the top four. It could be a case of Mind Games Esports pegging them back one. It is on the cards, or at least on paper, a brilliant four series that we're going to be looking forward to, Jam. The starting off with, with series number one here, it all begins with Spectre and Scavenge. Arguably, a game that both of these teams have to win, uh, as it so happens, though, uh, in Rocket League, Jam. Only one team can win, and that's the exciting thing about it. Yeah, well, we are starting indeed with the winner. So quickly, just uh, to go through the results of the teams uh, had in the previous week, Spectre lost both of their series against the Backflip Boys and Professional Ball Chasers. Uh, both of these were 0-3 uh, sweeps. That's a, obviously a bad start, but uh, one would argue that both of these opponents were slightly out of the Spectre's league. So this time versus Scavenge, it will be a little bit of an easier approach for them. Scavenge Sports themselves lost against We Eight in the first week, which was an expected result. Really, I don't think we anyone has expected any different. Uh, but then bounce back, week number two versus Ram Ranch. Unfortunately, just like in the first week, this week, they also have substitution. Kikis is playing instead of Ragus, and in my opinion, that weakens the squad of Scavenge Sports quite substantially. So if Spectre can show cohesion, uh, then could be the first series that really goes their way, especially with the less than optimal scavenge squad. Ah, uh, but here's the thing. I'm going to put out a stat on you, Jam. I've, I've been looking. I've been scrolling down all the statistics, uh, which you can find, by the way, on BESL.pro. They're all there. We're talking about uh, the top goal scorers, top assisters, uh, shooting percentage, uh, saves per game. And saves per game is the stat which I'm going to bring up because Kikis, he's had one substitute appearance before uh, so far this season. He currently actually leads the standings in terms of saves per game. So... 
You could argue that he's weaker in one aspect of the pitch, which is up in the top third. Uh, but he's been shown to be more than competent on the other side of the pitch, in the defensive side of the game. That could allow his two teammates to push on up to, to hopefully form a cohesive duo and bring this, squab, uh, this uh, scavenge squad home. Of course, not just for one series, but for both series going up. I guess there's only one way to find out, though, and that is to get into our first series of the match. It is going to be one for the record books, I reckon, certainly in the in the context of Season 3. It's Spectre in the blue, Scavenge in the orange. Uh, if you are new with us in the BESL, it is a best of five series. So the first team to score three game wins takes the point, and uh, for Scavenge particularly important for them in terms of a confidence boosting result uh, if they win then they move into the top four uh, that will be a pretty great position for them especially knowing that they will be playing uh, mind game c-sports later on in the day which is one of the teams that's contesting them but look at that great start for spectre scavenge esports using all three players couldn't get a goal on the other side of the field and here a weak pass to the side of frosty sets up mishko and then follow from Sam. And it's great to see Somic as well rocking uh, one of the, the new liveries from the eSports shop. Uh, a brilliant new addition to Rocket League in the latest patch, along with, of course, Rocket Pass 3. And rocking that beautifully golden splice livery. And uh, really splicing up this scavenge defense aspect. Uh, early doors, only a minute gone, I realize. But looking a, a, a heck of a lot more cohesive than certainly the last couple of weeks combined. Like you said, Jam, as well yet to actually pick up a game win our spectre so the even scoring one against a scavenge will be a, a improvement on the previous two weeks frosty trying to get it out of his own half keo with a well with an attempt at the challenge it goes straight back into the orange half though premier and misko both go up misko just high in comes uh, uh, Sonic V2, sorry, who misses his shot again, struggling to get out of their own half here. And it's, it helps for Spectre that their 50 50s are on point. Their aggression constantly being in the face of Scavenge Esports allows them to continue that possession and allow that con to continue the pressure, which in the end results in yet another goal after Scavenge Esports just couldn't leave their half, commit on the side, leave two of their defenders out of the play. And since Frosty couldn't get to the challenge fast either. Prime scores the second one for Spectre. There are some teams that just perform well when the pressure is fully on. And Spectre have left it late, but finally, finally, they are looking like a team. They're looking like a cohesive unit. Premier backflips to retain possession, picks up the 100 boost, and brings it out with a calmness again, which I, we've not really seen so far. Sonic V2 with the challenge. Here comes Frosty. Mishko wins the challenge. Oh, misses the touch. And here comes Somic again. Open net, surely. And he misses it. I know we've got more than half the game to go, Jam. I have to say, that was one that you really should have put away. I think they'll be comfortable with their 2-0 lead right now. Moments like that come. It's, it's the fact that right now, Spectre overall looks like the strongest team on the field. So even if that was a miss, they are bound to get another one pretty closely. Right now, it seems like Scavenge Esports finally getting their chances, getting out of their own half, but wasting their possession just a little bit. I don't think Kikas should have used all that boost in that attempt. Now we'll be following up on the other end, straight in front of the net of Spectre. But the challenges are coming in quick, and Spectre leave their net un uncontested. 2-0 is a dangerous, dangerous scoreline, though. And already, so often this season, we have seen when one goal is scored, another one quickly follows. But a big, booming clearance downfield from Mishko is going to open up that two-goal advantage. 2-3 two or three was a simple challenge in the air. And the swerving ball finds itself nestled in the bottom left corner. Yes, Cam and G-Sports were all about attack in that moment. And the challenge could have gone better for Spectre as Mishko the only way they could have gotten better he would have boomed it on the other side of the field but that victory in the air against Frosty just put a straight exactly where he wanted as Cavan G Sports all out attack not enough time to return back Somma gets it over one and it's another open net scenario both orange defenders looking to scramble back Frosty finally gets it away Premier meets it in the midfield 
wins the challenge against Kikis as well in the grand context of things. Mishko towards there, looks for the double tap, but Frosty was there to clear. Sonic V2, weak shot was going wide anyway. Keo gets it past one. Mishko again with the early interception, and there were two players there from the scavenge looking to get something on the ball. Neither effort going towards the net. Just shy of one and a half minutes left on the clock. And there's better signs, certainly from Scavenge, but it all feels like it's coming a little bit too little, too late. And they're not getting their chances on the other side, I feel. The yes, Frosty got himself three shots, but majority of these shots were not really threatening. Frosty's latest attempt uh, was something better from the side of Scavenge, is just that they wasted the majority of this match being in their own half, and right now these attempts are a tad too late. I don't feel like Scavenge Esports can bring three goals, but there's a good start. One uh during the last minute of the game as the poor clear doesn't exactly find the intended space on the field allows scams to just turn around and boom it straight in the net that was a lovely little tap in from keo i still feel like they've got an awful lot to do 50 seconds left on the clock to score two goals here in game number one and once again it is spectre on the offense not looking to retreat into their shells they found a good formula here no need to change it up demo in the back from somic ball comes around the corner premier late in saved key kissed the ball flies downfield mishko with a touch to bring it over to the wall it was a tap off premier as well the kind of fooled keo forces him back it's going to be Keo picking up possession once again. It bounces off the backboard. Kikis with the miss. Keo with the boomer downfield. Time is very much against Scavenge though. And missed opportunities like that are certainly going to be what haunt them. Spectre pick up their first game win in the BESL Season 3. And uh, in quite a convincing fashion as well, Jam. 3-1. Yeah, that, that first minute of the play really shown how well Spectre can play against an opponent who perhaps isn't as aggressive as them, or, or just at least more passive, perhaps. Definitely Spectre were looking faster on the field, which allowed them to win all those duels and challenges, and as a result, just continue on scoring on the scavenge. Scavenge are still lacking a little bit of an oom factor. Uh, unfortunately, Kick as the substitute uh, sh still needs to step up to the same level as the rest of Scavenge Esports if they really want to use them in the rotations in the play. Because just staying in the defense won't exactly help Kick as they need everyone up front on the field. Right now, unfortunately, Kick as leaves this game with zero stats to his name. And we'll be looking to maybe get into more of, of an action in game number two. Yeah, there I was hyping him up before the match with the most saves per game stat, but I'm I'm not too sure that he's going to have kept it after that one, honestly. As you say, uh, a, a healthy four zeros across the board. It's the four heads saying, oh, uh, maybe have to turn up next time. I can't remember saying his name in game number one. Generally a good giveaway that might be the one person that needs to click in. So it's a fresh slate in game number two. Once again, five minutes on the clock. And we start at nil-nil once again. And it's going to be Scavenge with the early possession. Somic with the challenge. Frosty now. But Premier throws this one towards the net. Keo on rotation back with the easy save. Premier taking out Kikis. Another boomer downfield. There's two players not too well placed it was kikis and frosty in a similar position on the backboard there they get away with it frosty upwards over the top of me <laughs> over the top of uh of one of the blue team players there i was just bedazzled by keo's toilet almost in an attempt uh -huh. to get a, a, a ball forward <sighs> almost ends up going the other way for scavenge it's close at both ends a much closer start to the game at the very least yeah, you can see the scavenge esports having more control than in the game number one spectre while pulling up the same pressure right now continuing to pepper uh, the passes off the backboard they don't have the same grasp on the game as in the previous one right now what oh that's a soft touch but mishka almost uh, fooled the rest of the scavenge esports team on that attempt and they continue to do these uh flicks and chips over everyone on spectre and it's actually working because that's a little bit unexpected the only problem is scavenge esports can exactly use that to their advantage to fullest 
Yeah, it's, it's one thing to make the opposing team unable to read the ball and, and what's going to happen to it, but you're also, it's a double-edged sword. Your team has to also read what's going to happen, and it's difficult to communicate that if you're just going for these wild card clearance for these wild card offensive opportunities. Somic going to throw this one over to the sidewall. Premier misses the touch. Somic once again on cleanup. Here goes Premier looking for the tap in, but Frosty was there with a crucial interception. Somic again on the offensive. Keo with a miss. Frosty on cleanup, and it does very much seem like a, a cleanup in aisle four sort of game here, Jam, where yes, there are mistakes coming up from both defenses, but the rotations from both defenses are strong enough even if there is one miss, there's another person to come back. Case in point no. there. Frosty could not have left that any later. Oh my god. I th I, I, I'm surprised he got to the ball. I thought he would at least bump the opponent <gasps> in. And now kick us on the other side of the field. A miracle happens in the net of Scaven G Sports. And then a miracle happens on the other side of the field. Kick us stays in, gets into the air much oh, faster than Mishka. Twisty Turtle is even here, and Mishko just spent all this time waiting as Kikis does his play in the air. 1-0 Scaven G Sports. And that is worrying for Spectre now. This, oh, that's, that's really worrying from Spectre. How brittle was their confidence? Yes, they've won a game, but what happens when they go behind? The answer is they can see two in the space of 15 seconds, Jam. Wow, Scavenge Esports, they tasted the blood and they liked it so much that the kickoff goal goes in immediately. Spectre couldn't quickly rotate. A little bit of a mistake on the side of Somic. Uh, look at that there, continuing. And Spectre, they only need to really hold on for a ball for slightly longer and the results should come, especially when that Scavenge Esports, uh, the moment they are on the back foot, the moment they are retreating in the defense, uh, those cracks that sort of uh, disappeared since they started scoring might show up again. Mishko can only help it off his own backboard. It's panic stations for Spectre. Frosty goes high. Tries to get the bump on Premier, but Premier gets the clearance. Somic attempting to help that on target. Goes wide. Round the corner once again. Premier was there late. Frosty with the clearance off to the side once again. Here comes Somic. The pressure mounting even further from Spectre. They're certainly not going to lie dead yet. Premier attempting to help that one into the middle. Good clearance, ultimately, from Scavenge. Kikis off to the side. Again, these wild ideas. Uh, they're trying to bamboozle the defense. They're doing a decent job of it. Mishko, big clear downfield. Keo up high, makes the save. Bayer into the corner. Comes down for Frosty. Oh, that's a great touch as well. Wins a challenge downfield. That's brilliant work. That is a win and a great clear all in one. Scavenge Esports relieve the pressure of their own net, allowing them to just restock and boost and turn back to the attacking once more. And it works out for them. So Spectre needs to go all over the field and trying to figure out how on earth can we start yet another attack. Scavenge right now can pretty much play in the defensive mode and they will have to. And Spectre are starting to increase the revs and put more pressure on side of Scavenge. have got a minute to do it though. Kikis. It's Premier then off to the side. Frosty lies in wait. Again, nice, soft touch, but it only finds the front bumper of Somic. Key Kiss was there to meet it at the midfield. Mishko can't help it onwards. Keo will pounce on this opportunity. Ball heading towards the net. Frosty attempted to help it on. Could, didn't quite work, and a miscommunication there between Keo and Frosty sees another breakout from Mishko. Premier looks to help it towards net, but misses the touch once again. 30 seconds remain, and Spectre again showing signs, but much like Scavenge in game number one, a little bit too little, a little bit too late. Yes, even later than what Scavenge Esports started to show. They, though, continued what they've started in game number one at the very end, and they will be pretty proud with their performance, really keeping Spectre at bay. With the help of three saves, both from Frosty and Keo, because the shots from Spectre were coming in thick. And right now, it's it's a solid win for them. It is something that should be really proud of. It wasn't a fluke. They've scored two goals that they really... Everything came together. And while it's not absolutely perfect on all sides of the field, uh, this time, Kikas did slot in correctly. The only thing is that he needs to continue doing that more and more and more. Because my impression is still that it seems like Kikas either has uh, has the completely wrong notes, like for a different song, or he has mm -hmm. the same notes as someone, either Frosty or Keo. He, he keeps finding himself in positions 
of either Frosty or Keo, and that sort of breaks down the rotations and really doesn't help Scam G Sports. But that being said, a victory is a victory, and Scam G Sports, again, pretty proud of themselves. And honestly, you can see by value of the stats, Frosty and Keo both picking up three saves each. It was the defensive side of their game which they cleaned up. Um, I was saying, it seemed like that sort of game where it was a battle of the defenses almost. It felt like they were almost offering a cocoon to Kikis. Okay, you're not on the ball completely, so let's help you out here. Kikis, yes, he was messing up the rotations a little bit, but let's be fair, he was in the right place at the right time. His goal would have been enough for Scavenge to win that particular game. And it means that we are set up very nice prospect indeed. It's one apiece to either team. Anybody's game. Let's find out which way it's going to go in game number three. And it's going to be Frosty facing off against Premier. The win from Premier, but picking it up straight away will be Kikis. It's an early shot on target. Keo off to the corner. Challenge won by Premier, booming downfield. Kikis with a soft touch. Premier helps us onwards. It wasn't a great touch from Premier. Frosty, though, takes out <laughs> Mishko and Somic. Who needs to worry about the attack when you completely obliterate it? Yeah, that was dangerous for Scavenge Esports. They were out of goalies. Uh, again, touch wasn't that beneficial for them. Inspector were all but ready to attack. But Frosty comes home, sees two of the players of Spectre ready to shoot and says, no, not today, not in front of my net. That, that double demolition just saved the bacon for Scavenge Esports. It's only Frosty standing out to me as a, as a player that's in the reckoning of putting his name in the hat for player of the day because the amount of times that he's not only bailed his team out but provided some excellent opportunities on net as well certainly standing out to me and here he is again round the corner Premier defending well Kikis comes in now here comes Keo following up as the third and um, Kikis misses a crucial a vital opportunity there one nil was staring them right in the face and could there be a rebuttal now no the defense get back just in time Look at that, the ball just moves around the field with a zip pace. Both teams are having to retreat back in, in a matter of seconds just because someone got a great pinch. And uh, both of the teams, as a result, playing a little bit more nervously. Scan G Sports returning back to the Spectre side as clears are not exactly coming for Spectre. Touches are a tad weak, but if Scan G Sports can get on the end of those, then Spectre at least get themselves a second chance to bring it on further on the other side. Somic helps it on. Misko helps it on. Where's Premia? Not in the right place. Kikis actually wins the challenge, was patient. Somic up high, looking for the double tap. Surely that's it. No, it ricochets off the crossbar. But Mishko was there to, again, it's that same word, clean up. Somic arguably should have put it away. But thank goodness for Spectre. Mishko was on the scene. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to reduce the spectacle fake factor just by a little bit since that double uh, tap did, didn't go in. But that read after post was incredibly hard for Scam G Sports. And even with two goalies, I completely understand why the rebound really couldn't be caught by either of these Scam G Sports defenders. Then the cleanup is only a simple duty for Spectre to put themselves one out. And there is another question answered, Jan. We were worried about their confidence, especially after losing a game. Without scoring a goal, well, confidence restored. And uh, the ball now just hanging around in the orange half. I'm sure that Spectre will be quite happy with that. Although that said, Keo open net and he threw it wide. And now the entire scavenge squad is caught upfield. Slight worry here. Sonic V2 caught in an awkward position as well. Mishko and Premier working together to put together a save. Kiki there with a vital miss as well. It's the on target, but Sonic was there. Keo. Tries to get it past one. Frosty back to Kikis. This is a super complicated move. And it ends up with a booming clearance on target. Saved by Frosty. Uh, yeah, those rotations were a little bit chaotic. But they were moving the ball around out of the reach of Spectre. And moving it in the right direction, which was the net of the Spectre. But the, the whole improvisational nature of that really didn't allow Scam G Sports to do anything. But it's nice that that time everything worked out for them. They really were on the same wavelength and continued doing the same old thing. So I expect more from there in the remaining seconds of this game. How big, how big will that miss from Keo turn out to be, however? Premier with a cherry pick. 
and lead is doubled. Oh, that's that's a perfect strategy. If your clears are great, start putting a number of players up front in the middle of the field to allow these chair picks to happen. And then it's just a simple uh, business of putting that straight on target. The scavenging sports weren't challenging quickly enough and already were not back in the net since they were thinking about the attack too. Ikis. Keo with the weird back pass actually ends up with Frosty, who feels bad backflips. I'm pretty sure he wasn't intending to do that. Premier towards net. Kikis on the rotation back with the save. Only throws it off to the side, though. It requires Keo to make a second touch. Frosty can't beat Premier, who now picks up the ball once again, looking for another goal. He gets it under one, but he can't get past Kikis. Big save, and Frosty going for the demo play. Premier was already ahead of the chasing pack to the minute left and it's looking good for Spectre. Yeah, that's a 2-0 lead that he'll be pretty happy with, especially after that runaway by Frosty and showed a little bit of a lack of cohesion by Cam G Sports. Frosty thought he had a backup. That's why he went for demolition, but the only players behind him were the players of Spectre who easily cleaned it up and returned back to the business of sieging the net of Cam G Sports, who right now are looking that this game number three will be out of their reach. Kio, again, can't get it past Premier. Kikis picks up. Ooh, that's oh, that's Wow, what a great doink that was. And yeah, I tell there's... you... <laughs> yeah, please, Ingenuity, do tell. Ingenuity, surely. <laughs> exactly, like Kikis. Uh, Kikis was <laughs> late to the ball. He lost himself under it. What's the best way to solve this situation since nobody else was getting it? Just drive under it again and do a little doink. Skip it forward. And Spectre, we're not ready for a little chip above them, which gives Scavenger Sports one small lifeline. It's a slim chance. And again, what, his time is running out, but the closest game by far. They're going to have to carry it the entire length of the pitch when Somic is making sure that doesn't happen. Kikis, oh, he did so well to score the goal, but it was a wild clearance up against the top of the cage. And Spectre pick up their second game of the series. They move on to match point. But honestly, Jam, the way this series has been developing, I think we could see our first game five of the BESL season three. Seems so strange to think that we haven't had a game five yet. I think this is our best opportunity by far. Yeah, I, I was expecting game five uh, before the series even started. It seemed like uh, with the circumstances as they were, but teams were sort of geared towards specifically that. Scavenge Esports, who need to continue their run, but were down a player. Spectre, who were down in the dumps, but had a really great chance to bounce back after the first two weeks. This is a recipe for a pretty beautiful cake, and the name of that cake is Rocket League. So, onto the game number four. I'm just excited what we can see. Kickus is... Just one attempt from Kikis isn't enough, uh, but Skio and Frosty seemingly are still, they're still sort of on their wavelength and still are working towards the same goal. I mean, again, I'm going to put this forward to you. Kikis has scored, he's been the scorer of the goals so far today. Uh, so it's, it's not like his shooting has been particularly bad. Um, it's just his cohesion now with balancing offense and defense which seems to be the issue and Keo and frosty you can't expect frosty to save the day every single time arguably he has to try and save the day as we enter game number four a reminder that if scavenge wins this series then they move into the top four they move into the land qualification zone <laughs> admittedly Spectre are fighting for their lives in this league. If they win, they only move up to 7th place in the league. But it'll be a lifeline. And Mishko started off game number 4 in the best possible way for them. With the with these kinds of shots, it's it won't be a surprise if they actually start moving on forward. That is as good as a start as they could possibly hope for. And not just a lousy kickoff goal. This one was... Tr like, Mishko just put himself there, committed fully. And now scavenges Esports defense after still recovering from that first one. Uh, after not being able to quickly react to those aerial shots, wasn't able to get anything on the ground either. Both Kikas and actually Kikas full on boost. Frosty was a little bit low, perhaps expected the teammate to rise for it. One two punch for Spectre. And that is a tough start for Scavenge Esports to play back from. Make that 3 0. Now every single player from Spectre have put themselves on the board. 
And as much as close this game was previously, Spectre just did the, I don't, I don't know, pulled out pulled out everything from under any scavenge esports. This is this is less than 30 seconds in our league. This is crazy. If it keeps on going at a goal every 10 seconds, this will be a cricket scoreline, let alone a Rocket League scoreline. Premier, finally a successful challenge from Scavenge coming through, and it's Keo looking to get it past Mishko. He wasn't having any of that. Frosty misses what would have been a shot on target, I imagine. And quite frankly, Spectre can look to play comfortably now, although they're not going to. Somic, I think that was going to go towards net, were it not for two scavenge players standing in his wake. Oh, Frosty with the dribble play. Somic having none of it. Kikis. Oh, it rolls off the back of his car, frustratingly so. And scavenge are all over the place. Okay, they might have stopped the bleeding, so to speak, Jam, but they're hardly looking convincing on the offense. That's the exact phrase I wanted to use. Stopped the bleeding. And but other than that, nothing is really looking right for scavenge esports. They're starting the attacks. Those touches off the back wall are coming in closer and closer. Frosty just decides to be the hero on this one. And perhaps a hero is exactly what they need. As now Kyo is joining the fray and Spectre are forced to endure the the assault by scavenge esports, the, the aggression that they have perhaps haven't shown previously, haven't had a chance to show previously, and now is now in full force, but you can get there purely on aggression. You need a little bit of precision as well. Somic has been outstanding in defense so far this game, consistently getting back before everyone else to, to meet every potential attempt on goal. He's doing his team a solid favor here. Keo goes up high now. Looks to get a touch off the backboard, and look at that. Once again, Somic with the clearance. He just sends it right back to where it came from, but both him and Frosty double commit. Both him and Frosty miss the ball. Premier gets it over one. It's an easy tap in, surely. Kikis, though, again with a doink, this time in the defense. And as half time comes and goes, Jam, still this three goal lead remains. And this is, well. The scavenge sports can be relieved knowing that they can score these goals as quickly as well. They only need less than 30 seconds to get back into a tie game. Unfortunately, in this situation won't be a tie game anymore. Spectre find themselves on a field after scavenge sports seemingly just um, play with the ball a little bit and then completely abandon it. Kyo boost over ball. Instead, I think they even got the neater of those two. And Spectre just put themselves in an even more comfortable position. Scavenge Esports not finding their chances, and the bleeding has almost started again. They've opened up a new wound, it seems. And what sort of effect is this going to have? Remember, Spectre as well, going straight into another series after this one. Their fight for survival, you'd argue, shortly, is well and truly on. The team at the bottom of the table running riot here. And I'm willing to play the slow game as well. Somic is beaten to the challenge by Frosty, but Mishko again, ready to keep it going towards the net. Kikis with a save from Premier, looking for his hat trick now. And Mishko not feeling the need to press. He might have rued that opportunity though, as Frosty gets one back. This was a great start from Scavenge Esports. Just boomed the ball out of their half. Again, using the backboard to put the ball straight back to them. And this time, no double commit. And while and since the ball was mostly on the ground, and everyone else from Spectre definitely was on the ground, the challenges came a little bit late. But Spectre won't be too disheartened about that one goal. It's it's almost nothing by this point. The problem would be if the second one comes in. Frosty oh. finds himself a ball on the wall. Cherry picks are now working in the other direction. Again, just find themselves an opportunity. Frosty read that perfectly, returned back, did a 180 immediately the moment he saw Kikis with a clear possibility. And this is exactly what Scam G Sports needs. Oh, he's as cold as ice and he's looking for the sacrifice. That is Spectre Esports. We have gone from a very comfortable, very healthy four-goal lead to a two-goal lead with a minute left on the clock. Oh, oh, if it had been one goal with a minute to go, we might have been in for one of the best games of the season. Early doors already. If we still get a goal in the next 30 seconds to go, so I'm keeping up that promise to you. Mishko 
towards net tapping and Somic V2 there re-establishes some order. That comeback was spirited, but I think it might have been just stumped out. It was looking pretty darn close to that, but another double commit and a defense. Kekas, it does seem like he doesn't play with Rusty and Keo that often to have some rapport, some uh, really uh, s s uh, unspoken understanding in between each other. So as a result, double commits still keep on happening, and now really almost no amount of effort from Frosty seems will be to be able to help this count G Sports to keep uh, and stay alive in the series. 5-2 is a strong enough scoreline for Spectre to just see it out and put themselves in such a great position for the second game of the day. Oh, they can, though. Scavenger's still going to try and just something up, try and form a miracle. All goes around the corner. Premier. It's a double shot save scenario. It was very much being smushed up against the backboard. Mishko, again, wins the challenge. And Somic has all the time in the world to try and keep this ball out of orange possession. It ends up back in Keo's hands. Not even a final goal to speak of, however. Game number four ends 5-2. And Spectre, they haven't just taken their first game of the season, Jam. They've taken their first series win of the season. They go one and two. They only rise one position. They go up against Ram Ranch. But it's a start. And Scam and G Sports are going to be ruining this opportunity. They had a chance to go into the top four, squandered now. And that makes the final game of today, the match of the week, Scavenge versus Mind Games, all the more tantalizing. Yeah, this would mean this basically flips everything quite a bit around. Obviously, Scam and G Sports will need a win to stay two and two in the in the league otherwise they put themselves in a horrible position themselves but for spectre this victory this victory just really puts a notice to every single team hey this is how we can really play and samic was the complete difference maker in the game number four just as as much as he was a big important part of spectre in game number one and as a result it is it is what we expect from spectre all this time and finally uh, tiny cocoon bro, grows into beautiful butterfly. Spectre slams Cam G Sports down. And so, what of? So, what are these two teams now? Of course, these are the two teams that going into this week we're saying that their seasons could be flipped. Early doors suggest that we are on our way to that. A reminder: Ram, um, not Ram Ranch. Spectre moves up into seventh. They're now on one and two. If they are to win their next game, which is coming up, this is our second game of the week, Spectre versus post-game strong, I'd argue an altogether more difficult challenge than Scavenge. Uh, that was a nice rhyme, wasn't it? If Spectre win that game, they move up onto two and two, which puts them right in the mix of the top four. For Scavenge, a completely different prospect, as I say, if they lose against Mind Games Esports now, that's arguably their playoff hopes done and dusted. A huge, huge result in the context of this season. Well, uh, thankfully for Scavenge Esports, they have fought against uh, the their biggest opponent, really, which of course is Weite. Uh, fortunately, mm. there's still um, there are still games versus the Backflip Boys and the Professional Ball Chasers. Excuse me. Who all, out of all of the teams right now in the league, uh, still only played one game. Professional ball chasers uh, have a lot uh, in front. There's basically there are a big question mark hanging about the, the rest of the league. But speaking about the next game for Spectre, obviously the whole week was the most important week of their league. It's it's specifically today that was decided whether they have any chances of moving forward because of two losses, even just one loss really tempered their chances. Two losses threw them out of the contention completely. Four losses to add, two losses to add to their existing two losses would have been disastrous. Nobody would be able to recover from that and get anywhere close to the fourth space. Here, though, mm. they put themselves one. Unfortunately, they need to continue. And the thing is, they are still are theoretically expected to lose against Dwight. But the good news is uh, their other games are next week, week four against uh, uh, Mind Games, rather. And they will be playing against Ram Ranch. So really, uh, seems like if they get the win now, 
two out of three games that will be upcoming in the in the, in the coming weeks uh, would be a pretty easy affair for them. So Spectre, we might yet to see them fighting for that number three and number four spot. And of course, their fight continues with the next game. It's it's always an interesting prospect, isn't it? Yes, Spectre is warmed up, but they've just come through a four-game series where they've had to fight hard to beat off Scavenge. Now, they go up against post-game strong, of course, one of the, the biggest turnarounds between week one and week two, featuring our player of the week from last week as well, Arceus. They're in a good vein of form. They're in the top four. They will have seen Scavage fall to Spectre. And surely this is a great opportunity to capitalize from their perspective to solidify those top four claim. Now, this will be this was one of my matches to watch this week. Uh, the other one that uh, we uh, was selected as the match of the week is also a pretty great one. Now, obviously, with even more implications now that Scavage Esports has lost their first game today. But it's Spectre, a team that now is uh, up and up, versus the post-game strong, the biggest surprise of the previous week, our league, when after the disaster showing in week number one versus uh, the backflip boys, they came in out of nowhere. They were mm. creating things on a field I wasn't expecting them to. Their passing was crisp. Their uh, really shot per percentage was amazing and the conversion rate was even better than that if that's even yeah. possible so now i'm expecting them to continue on to the same vein and if that happens specter has a very difficult game too i do get the feeling that this is going to be a scrappy one though because again there's there's a lot on the line for both teams of course, Spectre now, they've got this win under their belt. They can say, okay, we need to push on now. We can still qualify for LAN if we beat these guys for post-game strong. You don't want to get complacent. Uh, and you know that you can't underestimate a confident team who really has nothing to lose at this stage. It's a fascinating prospect on the cards. I'm not sure whether it's going to go to game number five either, though. Uh, well, well, I don't think it's going to go to game five again, Jam. I still fa uh, favor heavily post-game strong, just off the basis of how they performed last week. Let's see whether they're up to the task once again as we kick off in our second series of the day. It's going to be once again in the blue, Spectre. And post-game strong now taking up the identity of the orange team. And Arceus immediately into the danger zone. It's a ball off the backboard, but... Using their counter-attacking uh, strategies well. Once again, our Spectre from Maya is going to knock that one high. The touch from Arceus almost puts it into the clutches of Mishko. Premier on target. Premier scores! Yeah, Spectre, just as if nothing has changed, they are still in the same cars on the same side of the field. And a little bit of an unfortunate misplay by Arceus as he falls off the post and is unable to recover quickly enough to jump into the corner. A slow shot by Premier, but Spectre still start as one off strong. Excellent start. And uh, I notice actually Arceus now <laughs> on the top of his car, a four leafed Lucky Clover is held aloft. Well, not the best of starts, certainly. It might turn to be a bit of a bad omen uh, as opposed to a Lucky Charm. That said, he's just had an open net to aim for. And uh, our player of the week from week number two continues this fine shooting vein of form. Hey, ju just because you don't believe in luck and leprechauns and pot of gold early doesn't mean that Arceus doesn't. No. Seemingly, it does help him tremendously. Now, after that bush recovery in the net, here's some great con uh, car control shown by him in the corner, flipping just right and beating, uh, putting the ball past everyone on the side of Spectre to get themselves on the board as well. And post-game strong, well, now it's their time to shine. Their biggest strength last week were those ground passes, just quickly moving the ball around, uh, not giving their opponents a time to react or recover. Arceus once again in the net. Oh, it's a great save. He's, he's doing as much in defense as he is on the offense. And I really do think we've got a game on our hands here, folks. Minute and a half elapsed. 1-1. One, one. Mishko. It's a boomer towards net. Easily saved by Dipsy off to the side. Rukawa is met by Premier, but Dipsy Love picks up the possession. 
Somic with the challenge. Sees the ball loitering midfield. Another shot on target by Mishko. Again, a pretty simple save from Rukawa on this occasion. Romeo attempting to block the clearance from Arceus. Does well. Somic V2. Arceus again with the challenge alongside Mishko. Somic V2 loses out to Rukawa. Loose ball. Open net for Dipsy Love. Goes wide and Promea away. I'm seeing the same things I saw from Pros Game Strong last week. They are combining their patience on the field, knowing where to put the ball. Like they're not just booming it down; they're deciding specifically where they will be putting the ball past the players and and or just taking the shots, which allows them to avoid those 50-50s going unfavorably, or just allowing them to make those threatening shots on target as they know that they can boom it on target. Great pinch downfield to make the clearance. Arceus looking oh. for Rukawa, who sledgehammers that one home. It's 2-1 just as halftime elapses. You thought he got the ball in the corner, but Dipsy to Arceus to Rukawa, who then on continuous forward. That might have hit the Spectre player. Don't care. Post game strong still are the same team that we got surprised by last week. They are continuing their run. That was brilliant. That was a half-bound Bardowski, half-boomer of a goal. Post-game strong, bouncing back from an early slip-up to lead this game now. Primea over the top of one. Arceus with the save. Dipsy can only pass it back to Somic, who brings it around the corner. Mishko misses his touch. Premier on target. And Arceus was staring back in horror as Dipsy made the save. Unfortunately, after Dipsy made the save, Somic came in once again. And we're back to a square game. I was praising the post-game strong. Clearly, just a moment ago, this wasn't the best one as Dipsy puts it straight into the path of Spectre players. But I'm still loving what post-game strong are currently showing. Spectre are still with the pressure. Eight shots versus only the three from post-game strong. But honestly, every single time Post Game Strong get out of their own half and start hitting the backboard, Spectre should tremble. Yeah, you can definitely tell that Spectre are just hammering a load of shots in, hoping that one of them will go in on target. It's the quality of shots, which is uh, Post Game Strong's strength at the moment. Minute and a half left on the clock. Dipsy, it's an over one. Looking for the second, but Premier was there. And Arceus is a little late back, actually, in the rotation. Rukawa tries to knock it past Somic. Up from the top, Mishko gets it over. A double commit from Arceus. And Dipsy is just Rukawa there in the defense. Mishko wins the challenge, but it doesn't go towards the net. It does not fall handsomely, but handsomely put away. It is indeed by Primea, who, much like Arceus last week, has found his shooting boots. And once again, it's an advantage to Spectre. Boomers continue happening from Spectre. Aerial play is their forte. If for post game strong, it's the ground passes, then Spectre are just feeling so much comfortable flying high and booming the ball down. Well, force game strong, well, if there are no challenges for that one, you really need to possess yourself well or react well in the net. And that time they weren't able to do so. Mishko wins the challenge again. Dipsy, weak clearance. Rukawa goes up to make the challenge on Promea, but Promea once again winning. Arceus with the save. Premier almost sneaking it in there at a tight angle. Mishko almost, uh, almost sliding it in at equally a tight an angle. Spectre not letting up here despite the slender one goal lead. Sobic to the backboard and Mishko almost dips it down. It actually was, he didn't get a touch. It was Sobic's initial attempt towards the net which was on target. And Rukawa now scram. He doesn't even get it away because Mishko makes the challenge immediately. High pressure play from Spectre. And 10 seconds left to try and find any sort of a response here from post game strong. Once again, it's Premier up on the backboard. It's a touch there from the defense, but Somic once again is there. Mishko looking to get a final one in off the backboard. Is anyone there to follow it home? You bet it's that man, Premier, once again. That's his hat trick in game number one. And game number one is won by Spectre. Brilliant, brilliant game to watch. Not so great for post-game strong, though. They're going to be asking a lot of questions going into game number two. Question number one. How on earth did we stop Spectre from putting so many shots on target? Primea crept almost to 10 shots a game. This means that post-game wow. strong were 
allowing Spectre to take all that time to continue on rotating back and taking a shot after shot. That's 14 shots. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually really surprised that my caster math works so fast this way. Versus only four from Post Game Strong, it only means that A, if Post Game Strong cut down the amount of chances for Spectre, the result might as well turn the other way. Uh, since their defense right now is working pretty solidly, but at some point, even your defense will break down if you're constantly getting peppered. Mm, mm. And with that amount of goals conceded, Post Game Strong needed to come out and as a result, leave their net even more vulnerable to their opponents. So first question, how do we stop Spectre from taking that many shots? Usually that means control of the midfield and mm. or perhaps even better clears. Post Game Strong, unfortunately, are up versus Spectre, who are now back to their old ways of constantly being a high-pressure team, challenging every single clear of their opponents. And it, the longer the game number one went, the more Spectre looked like it was working more. Post Game Strong started pretty well with their clears at the very beginning. Spectre caught up to that and started uh, closing them down much better. And you know what? It's the midfield which I'm going to pick up on. I think you've, you've hit the nail perfectly on the head. It comes to mind every single time I was talking about a 50-50 challenge. It was always, always Spectre winning them. Either one of Premier or Mishko. Generally with Somic just hanging back in that anchor role while they're on defense. And yeah, I, I agree entirely as well. Postgame Strong didn't play badly. But the midfield, they, they need to take control of it. Early doors, they need to establish some sort of dominance. If they've got any hope of putting this Spectre squad away, of shackling them, I'd almost say. Premier dupes Rukawa round the corner. Completely gets it over the top of Dipsy as well. But Rukawa chasing up on that ball ends up with a great clearance. Mishko now tries to get it past Dipsy. Is unable to. And Arceus now has to double commit Rid Rukawa. But I'd say certainly in this first minute... Not necessarily dominance in the midfield, but a better showing from post-game strong. Yeah, it's post, uh, it's middle game okay-ish, I suppose. That's a really horrible name. But stay with post-game strong, please. Do not listen to me. But it's looking like a much more, it's, it's a much more calmer game, definitely. You could see that ball no longer zips around the field uh, with incredible speed. And which allows Post Game Strong to approach every def defense pretty casually and slowly. And their bout of possession at the very beginning allowed them to test out the net of Spectre. But since the speed doesn't pick up, and since uh, neither of our team are really getting in the favorable positions, you don't see much Arcus with a dribble actually finds it, puts it on the post, and now it's a horrible situation oh. for Spectre to having to clear the ball from a stationary position. That was great from Somic once again, scooping it up. From out of the danger zone. Mishko. Onto the backboard. It ends up going around the corner. Looks for the follow-up. Ipsy. Can't get it past Premia. And Premia continuing the play onwards towards the orange half. Mishko is surely going to pick this. No, he's not going to pick it up because Arceus takes him out in the back. Will be Somic then who picks it up. But Dipsy with a shot on target. Very much taking a bit of a page out of this Spectre methodology where you just hammer on home a load of shots. Hope one of them goes in. It's another attempt from Mishko. Premier misses his shot. Oh, but Somic was there to pick up the pieces on the cusp of halftime. It's once again a Spectre lead. Oof, that was tough. Somic coming in on an angle with a weak shot, but since Post Game Strong used two of their defenders to no avail, even that one comes in a little bit of a fluke since I feel like Post Game Strong had all the players to say that and said Spectre will be pretty happy with what they got so far because every single goal in this game seemingly would come at a pretty high price. It's another save from Rukawa. And we were talking about how the quality of chances was Post Game Strong's advantage. Well, they've not really mustered up anything quality so far in this game, number two. Dipsy. Has Somic to contend with in the back. It's an early challenge, though. Rukawa. And Mishko still can't get it past him. Uh, a brick wall there on the wall. Arceus gets it over Premia. Tries to get over Somic. The ball goes up high. Potential cherry pick opportunity, but Mishko is there. Rukawa. 
tries to find Arceus on the other side there. Sonic misses the touch, actually. And so this could be a chance for Arceus, and Sonic gets enough of the car in the way. Arceus again up high, rotates his car, shot on target, shot on goal! How did that one make its way through? It's a sneaky ball, that's all it is. Arceus finding themselves a pass from Rukava. They just moved the ball around. And since Spectre sees that they have no chance of challenging it quickly, they prefer to stay in net. But when you put two defenders on the job and neither of them can do it, uh, there's the big question asked about how good is that strategy for you? Perhaps a little bit more aggression. In post-game strong, aggression is exactly what they've shown, creeping ever so closer to the net of Spectre. It was, they only needed a little bit of continued pressure to break down Spectre. Again, high pressure, high playing game from Rukawa. It's a risk, but it is paying off. In the short term, Dipsy on the return, forced into a late save. Oh, and a golden opportunity for Mishko to get that lead re-established. He goes high wide and a little bit... Just not enough handsomeness on there. Premier. Oh, gets it past one. Gets it past two. Swerving through the air, it's deja vu, but vertically, brilliant goal, 2-1. That's how you do the aerial dribbles, Premier says, and post-game strong can't react. Everyone's just a little bit lower, everyone's too much grounded on the side of post-game strong to really do anything. And Spectre hit them on a counter-attack, something that post-game strong themselves would like to do. But can't exactly find that clear through the wall. I don't think it's working out for them for post-game stronger and just rolling the ball on the wall. Spectre is always there to block it, and then the ball just dies in the corner with the post-game strong just really losing the possession and the attack. Rukal is going for the ball chase. He's just about stretching to get back into the defense sometimes, but he is going for that ball. I mean, you can see it there. He's just trying to pile pressure on, and you know what? It's worked as well. He kind of fluked his way into being in the right position at the right time, but he also had the finish to apply, Jam. Holy moly, I was complaining that they can't get the ball through that corner. Really, that didn't look convincing at all. Just a series of 50-50s going post-game Strong's way and them continuing to push the ball forward. It's in some way, you would probably abandon that altogether since the ball wasn't going anywhere. But a great positioning, just right man, right place, right time. And there's an overtime looming above us. Rukava in front of the net. Oh, if only he was slightly back. That won't be a prime position for him. Ball still continues to move around. Samik will be dropping down, dropping oh, into the net. It. Zero he's second buzzer it. beater. Crazy stuff from Spectre and Pose Game Strong in game number one. As I was ready, considering putting an O for overtime on my sheet. No overtimes here, sir. No way. You know, it's a good game when James's voice breaks and Spectre... <laughs> Is on the precipice of a sweep here against the favorites going into this series. Post game strong. They looked better post game strong, but again, Rukawa, you see him picking up the highest score there. It's for good reason. He was everywhere on the pitch. High risk, high reward. And it was that risk that came back to bite them. 3 2, the final score here in game number two. Anybody's guess how game number three is going to go. I uh, my guess would be that it will be even closer than game games number one and number two. They've been creeping uh, lower and lower in post game strong. They still have that thing about them. Yes, they haven't been able to show it in fullest because really previous week everything was going right for them. Cards, cards falling in the right place, I suppose. Here, though, they don't exactly have those, uh, the opportunities. Their chances, chance count is still low. Their chance uh, realization is still pretty high. But they're not getting the same brilliant, uh, brilliant moments as they did last week, which makes me think, was it a fluke? Was it just a one-off thing? Was it the stars lining the very right way the previous week? Mm. Or is it, though, the real strength of the post-game strong? It's not the post-game. It's specifically the passing play. They have one at least... One more game to figure that out. A Spectre are sitting on the match point. And they're looking to drag down every team in the midfield to their level so that they have a chance to go to Hypertown. Immediately, a ball going just whiskers wide of that orange goal mouth. Spectre picking up where they left off in the finest of fashions. Last chance saloon. 
I guess they've got three last chance saloons, haven't they? If they do the reverse sweep, do uh, post-game strong. But it all starts here. They need to win this game. If they want to stay alive in the series, great passing play. And that is the PGS that we remember from week two. It's Arceus, the provider, and Dipsy with the finish. Make sure your hits are with a purpose. And that's exactly what post games strong are doing. Not just to boom down the field. No, if you see that someone is moving up, put the ball to him. Not just mindlessly boom it down here. Post game strong are adhering to that and finding the opportunities immediately. Mishka takes out Dipsy, but there were two. There were two cars in defense for post game strong. Maybe a change up in tactic. Park the bus with four minutes to go. I doubt it's that drastic, of course. But uh, we'll wait and see as this game progresses. I presume Dipsy there. Oh, what a touch that was. There was a, a blue player flying in. I couldn't quite see who it was. Premea as well looking to get a touch there. Rukawa comes in. Somic around the corner. Arceus with a loose touch. Ends up working out really well there. Decent clearance. And Premea misses his touch. Here goes Dipsy over to the side. Somic misses. I know Arceus is over here, but he decides to retreat back. He doesn't win the 50-50. He just gets a little bit of a nick on it. And Dipsy, oh, he loiters about in the air. This is a poor touch. Almost gives up a goal. Arceus coming in savior. And post game strong are starting to play a little bit more nervously, but so does the Spectre. Similar to game number three, looms uh, over both of the teams had post game strong, knowing that there could be their last chance. Spectre, knowing that they, they don't want to let this slip out of their own hands, give post game strong even more opportunities. Because the longer this goes, I feel the more post game strong can really show their true colors. And right now on the other side, I feel with still leading into this one, they are feeling confident that they, take it, they can take at least one game of Spectre. Down to the corner, Premea chips it over Dipsy, Rukawa there with the save. Dipsy doesn't get there before Somic, it goes harmlessly wide. Oh, that doesn't know, Mishko again. Like a shadow today, isn't he? Following up every potential play that goes wide. And once again, it pays off. Oh, that was a lot of trust in that bounce going the exactly the right way. Nobody touching and nobody adjusting the flight of the ball. But sometimes that trust works out perfectly for you. And Mishko looking for the opportunities. Now straight off the kickoff. Nobody in the middle. Let me quickly check the, the setup for the kickoff. Rukava, Arches, and Dipsy both going for the corner boosts. No man in the middle. And that's a little bit too easy for Mishko to put in. And script has been flipped once again. Another Spectre lead, this time from behind. Dipsy and Mishko meet in the middle. Rukawa gets in there. Ball ricochets towards the blue net. And Rukawa chooses to go for the 100 boost steal rather than getting a touch on the ball. I can't help but feel, but that's the wrong strategy at this point in the game. It's every single time Spectre's shown they don't need the boost to do what they're doing. Oh, double commit there as well between Arceus and Dipsy. Doesn't end up affecting him too much, but once again, Spectre survive. Rukal with the back pass, Dipsy was a little bit wayward, does the shot. Comic and Arceus, again the ball ricochets towards the net, easily dealt with by Premea. Rukawa over to the wall, Arceus is there once again. It's a soft touch down to Dipsy, gets it round Mishko. And once again, double committing of those two, they're getting, they're tripping over each other, Jam. They were trying to save that ball after it didn't exactly find the right the right move in the right position. And yeah, just as a result, they slightly getting and standing on each other's toes. And if you use two players to just move the ball around, that leaves third player in a horrible situation of having to take all the risks. And post-game strong would have to take all the risks right now, but we really would prefer a little bit of a safer situation where they, they don't have to put everyone on the attack with no uh, no one in the back uh, making a save because Bottle has been moving around the field oh. in a crazy fashion. Dipsy, though, individual effort, and Mishko can't even reach it. This is how one man beat an entire team. And if that's the goal that begins the reverse sweep, then... On that, on that basis alone, we might just have player of the day. That was outstanding from Dipsy Love, and it sets up for us as casters and for you as audience members 
A fascinating, thrilling final minute here in game number three. Arceus off from the wall. Following up the play, trying to find Dipsy, but he was coming in at too shallow an angle. It's just Rukawa left, and Premier dupes him again, but Arceus again picking up his defensive duties. Back there, Premier! Mishko misses! Oh, and Arceus is there again! Oh my goodness me, requiring the luck of that four-leaf clover to be in the right place at the right time. 30 seconds left. I think one leaf of that four-leaf clover is gone. It could be an even that Arceus has used a couple more previously. Post game strong right now. We need all the luck, everything going their way, and especially if there's some confusion on the side of the Spectre as they sort of allowing the post game strong to play with the ball in their own half. But we already saw one zero second buzzer beater not allowing post game strong to go into the overtime. Ball should drop down. <gasps> They're still keeping it alive. Arcus, Dipsy, and Primea come together to just shoot it up, down, shoot it up, and they just love to keep it. All they need to do is to kill it. Absolutely kill it. Do not there keep it up. Go. Thankfully, Arceus star stops a little bit short. And with his first overtime, I said this was going to be even closer. Let's see how deep this hole goes. Oh, Somic forced Dipsy into the retreat there. He could see that there was a problem brewing. Up high. Mish goes there. What a read if he's able to pull it off. Arceus misses his touch. Prime is there. But Rukara as well gets a, a lingering touch. And Rukara able to clear fully now. Here comes Somic in the defense. Rukawa not able to get it past him. Booming clearance back to where it came from. The other corner. Mishko tries to get it round said corner. Dipsy doesn't get it over Somic at the midfield. Primea here follows up the play. Arceus with a touch over to the side. And Rukawa misses now. Awful angle, and Mishko's going to win the challenge here. It's easy pickings for him. Great ball in, and Arceus was there once again to provide a crucial interception. We're seeing Jack and the Hyde situation for Boys Game Strong right now. The nerves are definitely getting to them. There's no question about it. The decision making is clouded. A lot of these weird touches. Shall I go for a ball in a position where I should never go for the ball? I'm just double committed and hitting your opponent. Thankfully, there is at least one man with the same mind as Arcus with that clear, really relieves depression and sends Spectre back home. Pereira gets it past one again, tries to get it past two. Doesn't happen. Mishko, it's a shot on there off the wall. Dipsy Love misses his clearance, so it's Mishko once again. Great find for Premier, but Arceus saw the play himself. He was two steps ahead of the game. Premier trying to get the cherry pick. Mishko trying to go for the bounce shot, and Arceus was there yet again. Outstanding game performance here from Arceus and Dipsy, almost carrying the team on their shoulders as things stand. Mishko now around the corner. Over to one. Here's Premier. Over to the other side. Tries to get it past two. Rakal was there on the defense. Somic throwing this one up high. Premier helps it onwards. But once again, it's two backing net. Rukara double commit. Here comes Dipsy now. Rukara on the wall, ready to receive. Down to Dipsy Love. On oh, target, and would you believe? Kara down from the ceiling. He didn't have any boost to play with, and he prevented a certain goal. Help, help. I have no control over my car, and I'm falling straight down to the shot that would have won us the game. Post game strong. This is the stuff that nightmares are made of. This could be their ticket forward on. Yet they are, have to fight even longer as we are approaching half of the normal regulation time. Oh, no. there it is. There it is. And it was a massive mistake in defense. You can't say that Spectre didn't deserve it, though. Arceus has been impervious for so long in this game. You cannot put the world on one man's shoulders and Spectre showing that team spirit really does come through when it matters. I said these two games were must wins for them and they have won both of them. This one in a 3-0 sweep. Post game strong, pegged back. Scavenge Esports, pegged back. And I think I need to double check here. Um, where, where are my standings on this one? Spectre will go two and two. So Spectre are in the are in the LAN promotion places. Incredible I mean, just, story. Just like that, with a snap of the finger, Spectre come out of uh, this uh, this week. This was their last game for today.
in a very comfortable position. As I mentioned before, the matches that they still have remaining, they still have three of them. Uh, two of them are must-wins. Third one versus we Eight. We don't expect much from them, but from this week, we have learned that if Spectre are given the chance that Spectre have a team of their level, or perhaps even slightly lower, that they are a goal-scoring machine, a shooting machine, and there is uh, there is a lot of so there's a, there's a new boy in town or three boys or men. I'm I'm I'm, I'm making judgments wow. way too quickly. There's a new team in town. The name of that team is Spectre. And wow, after this two one two uh, run that they've just made, they have a pretty good chances of continuing their run in the league. I had a load of people tell me, James, you got to watch out for Spectre. I think they're going to be fighting for top four. After the first two weeks, I was laughing at them. I thought that they were speaking total nonsense, but this week has proved me very wrong indeed. Battle for the top four is on, and that, uh, that battle will have to be postponed for now, at least. In fact, thank you, casters. Ireland can jar of jam for casting the Rocket League games while they are on the break. We're just going to be here for a while. We're the hosts. My name is Bizboni. And I'm Heckle. Uh, we're just filling in the time, telling you some stories, some nice stories yeah, I mean, while you're like waiting for the next game to start. Yeah, we're <laughs> here like this week, but we were missing. We yep. were not here for one week. Yeah, last week we were, we were not here. Yes. We had other hosts here. We had Sid and Nobody. We're hosting the whole day, but now we're here. And actually, we, we wanted to tell you guys about uh, where were we last week? We had some videos. We had some videos um, that we sent in last mm -hmm. week. Uh, so you saw like a little snippets from uh, TwitchCon, but uh, we're going to show you and tell you about uh, our experience. So we're going to have like some B-roll rolling in the background while we talk. So uh, yeah, so TwitchCon. Last week, we were gone. We were uh, at this convention called TwitchCon. Yes. Of course, Twitch is making that. This was the first year they made a convention in Europe, which happened in uh, Germany, uh, Berlin. And we're both partners, so we got to experience the partner launch and uh, a, lot, a lot of other cool stuff, like partner party. Yeah, and, and stuff like, like that. <clears throat> all uh, all the other parties, like for example, like we went to the Epic Games party, yeah. which was pretty nice. Yeah, a lot of game developers made their own parties happening in the evenings. While in the day, of course, the Expo Hall is there, so you could try out their latest games and latest things. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was kind of exciting. What it, what are your thoughts about TwitchCon? I would say it was pretty nice. If you don't have somebody like to go with, yeah. maybe it can be a bit boring. But if you have like maybe if you go there with friends or maybe uh, you have like a lot of streamers that you actually want to meet, uh, you should go there it's just because like, like then if you're just like a viewer you just go there and you, you know you can't try to like hunt mm -hmm. the, streamer the streamer is like oh you yeah. find like him there 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 and everyone's like is open like two photos and stuff it doesn't matter how big you are because like you could just like see soda popping yep it would just come to him like hey soda hey chance can i make a picture like he was like oh yeah sure like easy like nobody's like over their head or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of top streamers were there. Yeah, it's pretty, like, uh, I think it's different for us if we are the streamers as well to go there and uh, communicate with other streamers or network with mm -hmm. them or network with potential partners and sponsors and stuff like that. So it's a little bit different. But as a viewer, I think it's a cool experience to be able to uh, see the streamers that you have been watching for years yeah. in real life. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of uh, like panels were happening that were teaching about streaming, teaching about like the behind the scenes of streaming, how to deal with everything like legal things or like exhaustion or like depression or stuff like that that can uh, touch you as a streamer. So a lot of things to learn uh, for streamers, I think, were there. And that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was that. like streaming one or one. Yeah. Just like even like the exactly. basics maybe for those who uh, never stream but are planning to stream, like they'll, they'll be just guides on what they can do. Yeah. So I would uh, like suggest you guys, if you have a, ever a chance, and if you're watching a lot of Twitch streamers, to attend such an event because it, it's pretty cool experience. As well, the parties were pretty pretty nice. Partner party happened on Friday, where like only partners oh, could enter. Partners were, so well, like exactly. we met everyone who's on Twitch, who's a partner, who's like a full time streamer. So that was pretty exciting. And like at the last night, yeah, a lot of like companies and uh, 
game developers made their own parties. Uh, we went to actually the same ones. We went to Black Desert Online party. Yeah. And then we went to the Epic Games party, which is like, you know, their main game is Fortnite. So everything was like Fortnite themed. Yeah. And I kind of expected like for of... everyone to be like, uh, I know, uh, 13 years old. But no, like, I mean, it was a party for 18 years old, like for grown ups and stuff like that, which was pretty nice because like the atmosphere was really good. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and in the expo hall, a lot of things that we didn't test out. I feel like two days for a convention is pretty short because, like, sometimes you can't even, like, meet up with everyone that you wanted to meet sure. uh, in time. So those two days passed by super quickly. And uh, so at, at Sunday, I was like, oh, no, I didn't, like... I still need to do stuff. Yeah, I still need to do yeah. so many things. And I still needed to try so many things at the expo hall. They even had, like, temporarily tattoos from uh, Sea of Thieves, I think. Yeah. That was pretty cool, but I that didn't. Was a cue. Like, there yeah, were like cues for that. I was like, I didn't well, like Twitch Sings happened. Twitch Wait, Sings is let's like, check. oh yeah, she even came here with a map. I have a map. I'm ready. I'm, <laughs> I'm legit like Dora the Explorer. It's just like, That's before true. I was like, okay, use the hashtag. Please, guys, use the hashtag. And I'm like, let's use the card. Yeah. Okay, the map. Uh, so yeah, that was like the, that was like Twitch Sings, which is. Uh, the karaoke. Of karaoke, on yeah. On Twitch. And everybody can use it now. It's like a game inside Twitch that you can stream. You can just sing karaoke on live yeah. on your on your channel, and they had like competitions happening at TwitchCon for that. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. A lot of like um, talented people were singing, I would say, it, especially at the finals. Like, no yeah. one was like a casual, just like no amateurs. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty cool. Maybe I will check it out on my stream. Um, yeah, they had LAN party as well. Something that's gonna happen. Here at Hypertown. Yeah, but like the one at Twitch, uh, at TwitchCon was pretty small. Like the one that we're planning to have uh, at uh, Hypertown is planning to be like to be re really big yeah. in comparison with this. Like here, just like yeah, there were PCs, but it was like nothing special. Yeah, Even though it, the whole event is pretty cool. Exactly, and it's gonna happen. The uh, Hypertown land party is gonna happen for three days from Friday till Sunday. This one just happened in the midday. So not that exciting. If you can stay there for during the whole night, it's like it's not a land party, you know. It's, it's not the same thing. So guys, don't cry if you missed out on TwitchCon. Uh, it's okay. There's a Hypertown happening, uh, here in Riga, Latvia, on first and second of June. So make sure to buy the tickets. Go check them out. Links are in the description uh, below to find out more information about that. But right now, let's cut to uh, a quick little video that we made with Lotto, and uh, yeah, let's see. See, let's let's go and see that. Lai ne, es sadātos pie datora. Es, ko tu dar, lai ne, es sadātos. Man vienkārši paliek tāda sajūta, kad ir jāceļās un kaut kas jādara. Nu, kad pietiek sēdēt. Jo tāpat tās tā ir lielākā dienas daļa, ko tu pavadi. Un vienkārši vienam mirklīt saprot, ka davai es vienkārši atstāšu mājās gan telefonu, gan visu vienkārši vēdēšu pastaigāties uz mežu. Es vienkārši eju gulēt. Tu eju gulēt? Mm, jā, es mēģinu ieplānot droši vien kaut ko, kaut ko vairāk, kaut ko citu dzīvē darām, un tad, tad es neaizsēdēšos tur, ja man kaut kur ir jābūt. Es esmu izstrādājis rutīnu, kad es zinu aptuveni, pēc cik ilgu laiku jāiet paēst, vai jūs to slabākumu varētu ilgāk pēc mums sēdēt pie datoru un atkal doties paēst. <laughs> Lai neaizsēdētos pie datora, es dabūju draudzeni. Viņa ir tā, ka šobrīd kontrolē to visu. Nu, Nu, ir, ir brīži, kad gribas aizsteisties ilgāk, un tad ir tāds, nē, nē, viss, ejam darīt kaut ko citu. <laughs> ir jau forši. <laughs> um, Neveiksmu nav uztvarē, tad, kad tur varbūt neesi priecīgs par to, ko tu dzīvē dari. Tā, tāda, mm. būt neveiksmu, no kuras var izkāpt, bet tā, man liekas, ka tur man jābūt tā kā priecīgam ar to, ko viņš dara. Dzīve ir dzīve. Dzīve iet uz priekšu, un ja tu uzskatīsi katru lietu, kas notiek, ka tev paveiksmīgi vai neveiksmīgi, tu Tu baigi sāksi mētāt nu, tā, tādas svariņas apkārt, bet ja tu uzskatīsi, ka viss, kas notiek, ir, vai tu pēc tam no tā kaut ko iegūt, tad, nevar, tad saskatīt neveiksmi, tas jau ir vienkārši tāds zaudētāja mentalitāte. Neveiksmi manā uzturē ir pazaudēts laiks, tiešām nu, tāds, kas ir pa podu nolaists. Ir tādi brīži bijuši, ir arī pasēdēts vecīgā līdz kādiem 6-7 no rīta foršā sabiedrībā ir arī bijuši brīži, ka pēc tam domām, mm -mm. ne jau tā principa dēļ, ka tu esi kaut ko nepareizi vai, vai, vai kaut ko darīsi, bet tas, ka ar nepareiziem cilvēkiem es pazaudēju laiku, tas ir baigais nē, nē. Būtu nelaimīgam, just esi slikti, 
ir jāatrod veids, kā savā dzīvē just tais labi darīt lietas, kas tev patīk, kā, nu, vienkārši atrast to veidu, kā just tais labi, vienkārši nejust tais slikti. I just love those lot lots of videos, especially yep. when we were filming, you know, like we had nobody who was like, okay, like I really love my girlfriend, like and all the stuff. And then there's Yanis who's like super serious. And we're like, like Wi-Fi, chocolate was yeah. the most important thing that's in like true. in our life and stuff like, like, yeah. But that's like, needed as well, right? That is needed. So lot lotto is all about hashtag as elite uh, elite or uh, st stay in balance. Yeah, exactly. So life is all about balance, right? <laughs> so like in, in life you need chocolate as well and internet and wi-fi yeah to right? just be like fully gotta happy like, gotta gotta make it balanced now we shift our attention away from this midfield battle uh jam just briefly this is our one game of the uh of the week it doesn't really involve teams uh but it does involve a team now which is under huge amounts of pressure ram ranch are now the team propping up the table and after the Spectre have won two series on the bounce, th this game is as close to a must win as you could possibly get. Unfortunately for them, they're also up against Backflip Boys, who are one of the top teams in the division, even though they have a sub coming in for today. Yeah, both the Ram Ranch and the Backflip Boys are, will be playing with a substitute. Hard will be subbing for Akfas once again. And which leaves Ram Ranch without their captain for a second week, which in really, in my opinion, will hurt their chances even more. Uh, last week has shown just how much Ram Ranch uh, need to change in all aspects of play, rotations, decision making, aggression, and so on. They need a leader. And last week they couldn't find it. Hopefully Herod can come in and sort of whip up the team into some fashion. Versus them playing, though, it's the Backflip Boys team that perhaps has over overperformed a little bit their two first games both in the first week were versus post game strong and spectre two teams that we have just seen play both these games uh, series were a 3-0 victory for the backflip boys so from that point on we thought man it's a just smooth sailing yes last week backflip boys were playing against we ite against pretty much every single time anyone's playing against we ite we expect him to lose with perhaps the exception of professional ball chasers but professional ball chasers will be on uh versus the we ite uh later in in the run of the league but the question for me still remains can the backflip boys be that team that is really up there on, on the leaderboard or are they the team that sort of fought themselves some easy matches at the very beginning where both Spectre and Postgame Strong weren't exactly in the right mind. And can they fight back? This week, they are without Kartu, and Kartu's importance cannot be overstated. He has scored as much goals as Sarius and Garcia have scored together, meaning that without their best score, their offense might be a little bit crippled. Um, it, it gets doubly worse as well, because... As it so happens, actually, he's the top scorer in the entirety of the league going into this week. 14 goals. He's also the man with the most saves out of the entire league. 14 saves across the board. Car 2 has worked super well with Sarius. And, and we've talked about Sarius having this horseshoe role where he often provides assist after assist after assist it's always been Kartu that he's been throwing it to and so last week was interesting because we saw grumpy come in for gar show and so we're thinking okay but the main duo is still together they should be okay you know swept by weite now that's either a grand statement about just how good weite are or it was a statement about how taking one player out of this backflip boys squad completely throw th throws things off this is a tougher challenge in one sense, they have lost their best player in Kartu. So you're breaking up that duo. And Jam, you will know as well as I, as well as any experienced Rocket League viewer of the RLCS for the last three years or so, when you break up duos, it never ends well. It's always bad news bears from there on out. There's always struggle. Admittedly, it's only for one game or it's only for one series this time around. So fingers crossed for Backflip Boys, it should be okay. That said, the Ram Ranch desperation tactic cannot be ignored. These guys really are in a last chance saloon. If they lose this game, if they lose this series, okay, it's not that they're mathematically out with a chance of qualifying still, 
but they're all but that by that point. Yeah, honestly, it's looking unlikely for them to scavenge anything past this point, uh, especially knowing who they were playing against so far. And it, it weren't the strongest of the teams, really. So their chances right now are not in the worst, in the same way as Spectre were playing this week, but they still have a lot of strong matches in front of them. And this one is either now or never grumpy starts off strong but that's not the team that needs to be the saving their uh their bacon no it's the backflip boys who are starting off strong it's uh in the blue ram ranch in the orange backflip boys i noticed this actually harrod rocking that new guardian car from rocket league pass three sadly uh it doesn't really matter what car you decide to rock week in week out when you double commit in net like that you're inviting opportunities and grumpy Putting the pass behind him, he's filling in for the top player. He's shot like the top player. It's one there within the first 20 seconds. No, Grumpy just wands back into this league. Not the first time he has been playing, obviously, uh, also subbing uh, last week, was it? And yes. Well, I mean, he he just he, his team didn't qualify, but at least he find him some uh, some way on onto the field and really showing for him that yeah, I, I can play just as well as anyone else here. For Ram Ranch, all right, this is this is just a beginning. This is just one tiny mistake. Um, really, time hasn't passed down for them to test it out. Oh, super. Super. That, that's not a shot in my book. That is that is a touch that is impossible and oh. yet. All right, flare, class, superior technique coming in from Ram Ranch and super. I've heard that he is on fire. He wants his team to continue on winning. He is really result-oriented and wants to get those results. Results almost coming the other way around the Gar Show. Hits Ram Ranch on the back. Well, wow, this game is heating up. We're only in the first minute, are we? There, I mean, there definitely has been a conversation raised in the last week because Pooper was brilliant. Standout player for Ram Ranch last week. Does he deserve a better team around him? I think that's a question to be asked at the end of league play. Short term, not going great as Garsho notches up goal number two there. Pretty easy tap in for the backflip boys. And as, as, as much of a flare shot as that was from Super, he really needs his team to start working a bit hard on the defense. Another shot ricocheting off the inside of the frame of the goal there from Garsho. Ram Raj, you've got to be careful, and that's not the first time we've said that this season. Right now, being careful is all they can possibly do. Already sustained seven shots from their opponents. Backflip boys are having a party on the blue side. And Ram Ranch themselves, they haven't been invited to their own party, or someone has just come in and started a party in their own house. They're not happy about it. The problem is they can't do anything about it. This backflip boys still in control, still keep on lobbing the ball in the side of the Ram Ranch. And that was a poor touch from Howard. That should have been a boomer to the other side of the field. Instead, it's a gimme for Ram, uh, for rather the backflip boys. Yeah, he jumps into it when the ball wasn't really threatening to go much higher than the top of his Dominus. A gift, 3-1. And it's Sarius, who's uh, so often the provider this time, uh, with a goal of his own, and looking to get a second on the board, it's super to the rescue. And hello. Oh. That is a heart-sinking-in-mouth moment where you think, oh, it's an open net, and then it just it just goes wide. And that kind of sums up Ram Ranch's season. There's been some great moments, hasn't there? But great opportunities or easy saves, Jam. They've gone a begging, and it's led to them being punished. Yeah, you have to have at least some conversion rate. If you don't get it, it's all off. And this time, Ram Ranch, I'm feeling a little bit of a change in their game. If previously they were really passive, right now they're overly aggressive. They still need to find that middle ground in between those where the magic happens, but their playstyle has changed just a little bit. It hasn't changed their results much, though, because Backflip Boys are just is just going ham on the net, Ram Ranch. It's a 50-50 challenge between Seth and Refka. Still, the backflip boys are controlling this game. Though a double commit on the offense could allow an opportunity here. Refka looking for the redirect, completely whiffs the shot. Harrod somehow manages to whiff even worse into the corner. It again, gifts possession to the backflip boys. Grumpy up high. 
It's a shot that goes harmlessly wide. Super looking for some sort of distraction, but Garsha with an easy clearance. To the corner. Harrod with a booming clearance back downfield. That's a lot more like it. And Grumpy deals with it comfortably. Ram Ranch are moving the ball around. I can give that to them, but they quite often, if something doesn't go their way, they almost stop dead in their own tracks. There isn't a switch that gets flipped quickly enough from attack modes to retreat modes, and they just spend some extra valuable time that they could have used to just keep on the momentum, keep on moving, for just standing there and doing pretty much nothing, of trying to figure out, should we retreat, should we not retreat? That gives Backflip Boys the opportunity to recover, and with the amount of time that Backflip Boys already have, Ram Ranch are just giving this game to their opponents. Sarius is... Oh, Refka, what are you doing? <laughs> we don't have to say it for the first time either. Refka's been left a little bit wanting in defense from time and again. And that's another shot that really could have gone on target. This time from the backflip boys, though, wasting an opportunity. Grumpy. Decides to throw this ball up for Garsha, who's behind. Here comes Sarius in the third, but Super was there first. 30 seconds remain. And rounds to try and find a goal, let alone an equalizer. Garsha over the top, but Super with a vital touch. Garsha over the top again. And Grumpy is met by Harrod. Refka straight towards Garsha. Open net. Grumpy, again, just keeping it out of blue hands. And those Super provides something of a clearance. He gets it onto the backboard. Is there going to be a consolation goal? Yes. Refka follows on home. It's 3-2. But we're going to need a kickoff goal of miracles to see an equalizer. We actually seen a couple of kickoff goals today already. Uh, at least one of them was a complete and utter mistake in the defense. Backflip boys don't look like the team that will be able to do so. Uh, we'll be able to like, completely fall apart in that one. And with overly aggressive kickoff this time for Ram Ranch, the ball just falls up. You you shouldn't be expecting the kickoff goals. It's it's a thing that happens. You might go the specific way. You might really aim for. Um, like a specific position on the field. You can try, but it's not guaranteed. Majority of the goals are being scored of just your plays, your your passing plays, your aerial plays, your individual technique. And here, Ram Ranch had a tiny hope, and that attack at the very end, uh, with head out backward and Refki coming in, looked brilliant. Like it's it's Ram Ranch perhaps at their best, but this was basically only their third chance of the game. And when I look at the side of Backflip Boys, 16 shots on target. It tested Ram Ranch all throughout. And yes, Super is the top saver for Ram Ranch in a way that shows how well he's versed for defense. It also shows how much Ram Ranch is getting tested in defense. Positives for Ram Ranch. They're able to score twice off three attempts on target. Bad news is that 10 shots on target's a good game for a team. 15 shots on target, we're talking domination. And I have a strong, suspicious feeling that this is backflip boys just being a bit lax on the defense more than Ram Ranch creating <clears throat> spectacular plays. Don't get me wrong, the goals were good. But could there have been a bit more done? I suspect so. Into game number two, then. And I'm sure the backflip boys will be looking to hammer on home the advantage. They probably would not have wanted to have won as, or with as little a goal margin as that ended up being. Garsho into the center, but it's Refka who meets the challenge. Downfield, it's a double commit. Sarius was there. Gets it over one, and again, wide open defense. Can Sarius bring it home? No! The angle betrayed him. Garsho is going to follow up. That was the third time of asking from backflip boys. It's like the Red Sea Jam. It parts away for this backflip squad. Yeah, they had three uncontested shots with Ram Range having to chase every single one of these opportunities. And seemingly for every single one of them, they were just either a tad too slow or guessed the positioning completely wrong. Right? The, while the attacks are still continuing for Backley boys, they're looking for a second one to add immediately after the first one. Not a keg of goal by any means, but it's control in favor of Backley boys with five shots already. And I forgot to give him his fair dues as well. Grumpy has not looked out of place. 
In fact, he is, he's found a role in the offensive side of the game, basically picking up where Kartu was. I don't think he's as strong defensively. Kartu just seems to be everywhere. He's probably got a, a, a matter to matter transporter in his car or something. He's, he's so all over the place when it comes to pitch coverage. But, Gum but Grumpy has got some, uh, some good shooting boots on. And uh, seeing him in possession now, he's going to look to get this off the backboard. Both Refka and Super there. Sarius with a great angled shot, just a little bit wide. Grumpy once again looking to get it over everyone. Does get it over everyone and finishes home almost with a goal. Super with a crucial, crucial interception that keeps this game at one goal to nil. Ramrange are kept alive, but just barely their IV is almost out. And look at that, another open opportunity. Garcho just finds themselves an open net. Everyone from Ram Ranch left for the holidays. And nobody's right there. I, I can see what Harrod was going for, but the moment, the moment that 50-50 was won, he should have turned around. He did, but it was just a split second too late. It's not even half time and we've had nine shots on target from backflip, boys. That is absolutely terrifying if you are Ram Ranch. That is... That is not just defense gone AFK. That's backflip boys in good form. A recipe for disaster if ever there was one. But once again, Jam, Ram Ranch taking the opportunities when they do fall their way. We're back to a one goal game. And Harrod was gifted that, honestly. Complacency perhaps leaking into the backflip boys' place, uh, into the backflip boys' mindset, I should say. And I, I see why the Backflip boys might be thinking that Ram Ranch won't be uh, anywhere near that roll off from the defense because, again, the passiveness of their play is showing up just slowly. But this time, Ram Ranch were in the middle field and looking for those opportunities. An opportunity did present itself to them. Hard as a substitute, find himself a really great demolition. Ball rolls just to the side. This was a great plan with two other Ram Ranch players in the attack. Couldn't find themselves an open goal. Gosh, I cuts off Super's attempt to clear. Grumpy now on the follow-up. Refka. Again, it's going to be... It's great rotations from backflip boys. Garsho. All flying over to the other side of the cage. It's Howard with a clearance, finally. Popped on by Refka. Howard up high, whereas Super on... Super wasn't ready to commit. I don't blame him. His teammates were, were fully up and ready to go. Refka going to follow this one off the wall. Oh, and a bump from Super on Harrod. I've been singing his praises as well, but that's two mistakes from Super. Open opportunity for Garsho. Just goes wide. Oh, this was a spot where the pass was perfect. And now the series of passes are not that perfect at all. But that pass was too perfect with two players fighting for it in the same spot. Most likely on Balkans, most likely thinking that this is mine. And in the end, such a great opportunity, such a great setup goes begging. And back with boys return to the good all dominant slow shots Lovely. is just enough for Saris to put on target. That's, that was a great bit of work from Garsho. Look at this touch. Simple, get it back into the center, but far enough away from Harrod so that Sarius has got a free shot on net. Uncontested. Goal goes in. One and a half minutes remain. Two goal lead established for backflip boys once more. Harrod towards the net. Super on follow-up. Easily dealt with by the defense. Sarius and Refka meet in the middle. And Super trying to get involved. But once again, not too effective. And that's just a whiff in defense. And that's a three-goal lead open up. Now I'm looking for Garcho. The chance might be that he had absolutely nothing to work with. Oh, dear. Yeah, he, he just goes under it. Wasn't even a fake. He wasn't reaching it one way or the other. He was in a position to block it if needed. But even that wasn't required from Garsho as he puts it hat trick on target. And back to the boys continue on the dominance. Ram range. They are getting goals of gimmies by their opponents. Uh, but those mistakes from back to the boys are so rare. And the prowess in the attack is so great that those might be just small, tiny blooms. Back to the boys are complete control of the series. And that is. Number two for Sarius. Garsho already with a hat trick, of course. I'm sure that Sarius will be looking to match him. Dare I say that game is already over here in game number two? Four goals in a minute is uh, a tall order indeed. 
I just don't see where Ram Ranch can gain any advantage here, Jam. Not much has changed from game number one. Darius then, over to the side, around the corner. Grumpy picks up possession. Refka misses the touch. Super. Sarius helps it onwards. Harrod. Oh, it's a bit of complacency in defense. Again, they're four goals up. They don't really need to worry too much about solid rotations. Refka offered a, a free chance of possession here. And Sarius with a boomer downfield. Is that going in? Just going wide. It was That would have been the most soft hat trick goal that I probably would have seen in my casting career as a Rocket League commentator. Game number two ends rather anticlimactically. 5-1 though. Uh, a very conclusive scoreline. It's another 10 plus shots on game. It's another 10 plus shots on goal game for backflip boys. It's another three shots on goal for Ram Ranch. Ah. Yes, yes, that over-exasperated sigh and a shrug is exactly how you can describe this game. We sort of expected this from Ram Ranch, potentially, with, with the only potential problems that Backflip might have been having with one player down, that player being their top scorer. There might be some promise, but Ram Ranch, they still haven't found their real play style. Last week, they were overly passive. This week, they're getting quite aggressive, but their old ways are still there if you look for them. As a result, it still feels like they are still... like Everyone else in the league seemingly is just one head taller than them, and mm -hmm. that giving them not only the little bit of a... They're having to look up at everyone and still failing to do everything doesn't feel good for Ram Ranch and certainly won't be feeling good for them coming in into game number three. They do feel like a team that is out of out of breath, out of ideas. Um, I mean, even even looking at individual performances, Super looked really good last week, despite the fact that his team went down. The plays that he was creating were, were really inventive, uh, really screamed of a player that was trying hard to carry the, the stable forward. He, uh, he made a, a really, really good goal in game number one, but he, he just looked like a, a lifeless corpse out there in game number two. He looked like he was just going through the motions. And when your best player looks to have run out of ideas, Jam, uh, that, that, that doesn't generally bode well. Yeah, well, f uh, by this point, knowing how much they're getting uh, pestered by the opponent's teams for Ram Ranch, it is... They need a miracle. They need absolute and utter miracle. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting perhaps Akfas coming in down from the sky in the ray of light and saying, my children, I'm about to save you with the, some of the best Rocket League you've ever seen. I'll give you a blessing that will allow you to play as good as you've ever hoped, as much as you've dreamed all this time. But it smells a little bit of Hollywood, our league. I don't think this will be happening. Maybe they'll they make a story about some team. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it will be Ram Branch. I am, I'm already sort of burying them before the third game has even started. Mm. But it just doesn't seem likely. Especially against the Backflip Boys, who I had my doubts about. But by this point, I have no doubts left. They definitely know how to play. They definitely will be up there uh, in the league table by the end of the season. And they will be going to the land finals and fighting uh, with some best of the best. Now, almost the question is, who will be that fourth team? Since I've already sort of predetermined a couple of teams that already will be there. We eyed professional ball chasers, in my opinion. And um, of course, now the Backflip Boys have put them up there as well. Still, the fight is on. And our match uh, match of the week, the next game that we'll be having, will be one of those fights for that uh, for, for a spot, the last remaining one. But that's all later. Ram Ranch and Backflip Boys still need to fight at least one game. Uh, we didn't see... Uh, this is another last chance saloon, but in the previous game, of course, uh, Spectre said that the the there th this town is too small for three last uh, 
uh, last chance loans, I don't think Back for the Boys will be giving any opportunities for Ram Ranch either. Fair to say. We're sort of, we're brought up as casters to not be too negative all the time. It's good to be critical because, I mean, goodness, that's, that's our job really, but want to be positive as well. It's just the stats betray Ram Ranch. However, wait a minute. Super must have heard me. He must have heard me throwing shade because that's an excellent goal. Well read, well directed, and Ram Ranch have a lead that they can hold on to here in game number three. Uh, full turtle mode starting from basically five minutes in. I don't think this will work for Ram Ranch. No, for Ram Ranch, the best chance will be right now to just continue doing the same thing. Just being on the attack. The moment, though, you feel that it's not working out for you if uh, that first adrenaline shot ended and you find yourself again losing the challenge, just making the mistakes, then go back down. But right now, you've dealt a shock to your opponent. Hit a second one while they're still recovering. Should um should quantify as well. No team is mathematically out with a chance of qualifying for LAN after this week. Next week we do start to talk about they can no longer qualify for LAN. Uh, but again, we we reiterate stats don't make for good reading, and Ram Ranch simply have to win this game. They have to win the next three games. <laughs> Otherwise, they find themselves on a 0 to 3 ratio in league play. They'd have to win every other one of their games moving forward. That said, that said, Super with a booming clear completely catches out the defense. That was a whiff from Garsho. And they have a 2 0 lead to defend Jam. Super has found itself a horse, has climbed on the set horse, and is currently riding towards a victory. Single-handedly carrying the team on his hands. Look at that, in the air again. Hard, impressed by that as well. Goes for a little bit of aerial play. Backflip Voice have turned down their pace just a little bit. And with Super being the Superman that he's currently, as he's currently playing, is really helping Ram Ranch to keep out the lead in this game for Backflip Boys. Knowing how many shots, how many opportunities they had in previous game, how much possession they had, it might be only a matter of time. And Garcio hits a waterfall down just as Ram Ranch were feeling pretty mighty about themselves. I'm gonna say it. I've, I'm gonna say it a third time. The stats betray Ram Ranch because guess what? They've already scored two goals in the game previously this series. They lost it three two. And already that's one back for the backflip boys. What is left in the Ram Ranch tank? Garsho just goes wide. Grumpy just goes wide. Garsho doesn't miss at the third time of asking. And that two goal lead has been swept under the carpet. I'll let it be the next. As a exasper oh, God. Exasperation moves. There we go. Third time's the charm. And pretty much for the time's a charm for Backflip Boys as they score that one after Ram Range's defense just threw themselves under the bus. But the bus didn't slow down, just continued on rolling. And Backflip Boys clean, well, almost clean. Yeah, it's, it's not as clean if you consider all of these hits on the wall and angles not being found. But Ram Range really just cleared out the space for their opponents, and their opponents are still on barreling four. Howard taking out Grumpy before the ball could be reached. Garshows Gar offered empty possession there. Here comes Sarius, just goes high, here goes Grumpy, and goal number three. I feel sorry for Super. Super finds cells in the net constantly. He is the the punching doll for the opponent's team. And unfortunately, right now, all that uh, hype that Super perhaps had, all that just energy that he perhaps got at the very beginning of this with his two goals is gone. Now he is playing at... Uh, basically uh, with the anger in his heart and that's not helping anyone he's going for challenges that quick challenges out of pure rage rather than cum calm and collected and yeah, that doesn't help his defense we have a saying in the uh in the sim racing e-racing sim jam uh when something bad happens to drivers there we we tend to say that they enter red mist and, and what I mean by that is they tend to go for moves or they tend to overdrive the car and that ends up almost inevitably causing another incident or, you know, causing a, a retirement from the race. 
I think we're getting Red Mist super here, where he's overthinking his plays. He's trying again, understandably, to try and carry the team. But Rocket League doesn't work with that. It's a team sport. And uh, you're as good as your weakest link. And uh, sadly for Ram Ranch, I think it's just reality setting in. In terms of land qualification at the very least. No, we they're, are they're about to give there. them... Yeah. There's still one chance uh, or a couple, but really everything needs to go their way after this one. And at the very beginning, they need to get a goal going. Because after that mm. great spell of control that they had at the very beginning, something that they should really be proud of, some of their best Rocket League perhaps. Backflip mm. boys are back into control with not that many amount of shots, but you know who has his name already on this game. Grumpy. Over to the corner. Looking for the flare shot. Trying to help into the corner there. And Sarius on target. Beaten away by Refka. Again, all they really need to do is just keep the pressure on. They don't actually need to score again. Sarius looks to get it over Garsho, who was floating down. Manages to get it back into the center of the goal. No follow-up. Here comes Garsho, finally. Goes high once again. Refka over one. Howard looking... For the redirect opportunity was there. Another whiff coming through. Does well to get it back in, actually. But a booming clearance downfield. And the opportunity is gone. Still trying to look at that. They, they were this close to making a good clear after Backflip Boys came on the attack. But right now, Garcia will just be adding his fourth one. Killing any of the chances the Ram Range had down. And in the battle of two substitutes... Um, I would have to say that Grumpy for a second time now has really stepped up on the side of Backflip Boys. Yeah. While Ram Ranch hard was there, was not that detrimental to the team, but it's a pretty easy choice between him and Grumpy. It is another hat trick to the name of Garsho. It's another series win to the name of the Backflip Boys. They're going to keep on playing just because they love their Rocket League. Uh, good to see the, the endeavor to keep the ball off the ground as, as long as possible. Are we going to get a consolation oh. goal? <laughs> no. I think Super deserved a hat, to be honest, after that. But did so well to try and keep his team in it. Uh, sadly for Ram Ranch, he didn't. And that means that Ram Ranch now sit uh, rather uncomfortably at the bottom of the table with a 0 to 3 ratio. Uh, as Jam said, they basically need to win every game from here on out if they have even the slightest hope of qualifying for LAN. On the other hand, however, Backflip Boys go on to 3-1. and one, Their place at LAN, I'd argue, one win away from being assured. Yeah, this, this looks like a great... They had a great start, no doubt about it. The Backflip Boys with three wins. Still currently sitting on the most amount of games. No, actually tied with Spectre now, now that Spectre had their run uh, previously in the day. But they... And all that all those stat lines uh, or, and just uh, stat points that we were talking about, the Backflip Boys, were also gotten off the back of the extra game. And knowing just how much they like to score and and make shots it's not a surprise we found them at the top of the leaderboard for goals for, for shots per game and for everything else right now though everything has settled down pretty smoothly for them and yeah they will be looking like one of the teams that taking uh one of the top four spots in my opinion the rest the rest is up for grabs our league and our very next game will be exactly the proof of that two teams that will be looking to solidify their place in the mid uh middle of the uh, le league board and unfortunately, that middle of the league board is pretty volatile. You drop down one yeah. position, bam, you're completely out of the land. Only the top four teams get through. Mind Game Seasports and Scound Sports, the next two teams that will be appearing on your screen, are those two teams that are still sitting outside of that range, both looking for Scound Sports. It is to tie up their results and get a 2-2. Uh, for Mind Game Esports to get their either their second win or um, maybe even drop down for them. It's, it will be a question uh, as uh, they are also playing with a sub today. Uh, Link Carino will be subbing in for Augustus. And uh, of course, uh, we had already saw Kikis previously playing for Ragus uh, on the side of Scavenge Esports. It, it will be it will be an interesting one. Uh, 
for Mind Games Esports, uh, their top player, Pumpkin Digger, is still there. Uh, a lot of goals still go through him. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he, he must be their top scorer. Um, so yes. that, that big piece for uh, Mind Games Esports is still there. For Scavenge, well, we already saw them once today. They took one game off Spectre, who rejuvenated themselves and came in into week number three with only one aim. They completed that target. Scavenge Esports still fell to Spectre, who were just on top throughout the whole duration. So it's no surprise, early that this is our match of the week because two of the teams mm-hmm. with similar ambitions, with similar positions in the league, uh, league table currently will be looking to not only to improve their situation, but also to knock down their opponent's effect. Not only this, but the, the winner of this game, and it's, it's, I'm so glad that we have it as our match of the week. The winner of this game actually moves up into the top four. So as things stand, the backflip boys retake first position with a three to one. We eye to second with a two to nil. You then have Spectre. <laughs> Eighth going into this week to third by virtue of winning two games. A two and two ratio puts them ahead of the professional ball chasers, which again it's kind of they've always been in a bit of a faux position because they've always been behind the trend of everyone else. They sit in fourth on a one and oh, which is why the winner from this game is going to move ahead of them because they would have won two games over ball chasers one. It is a fascinating prospect. It really is. And I'm super curious to see how mind games do without Gustaz, because I think unlike a lot of the teams that we've seen in this league so far, in which some have set roles, but often they're covering two different elements of the pitch. In mind games, rather ironically, actually, you have three players, each with a set defined individual role. You've got Pumpkin Digger as the striker, you've got MacGyver as the setup player, and you've got Gustaz, who you've often find in defense. So you're taking away your defensive anchor from the play. For Scavenge, that's something to try and prey upon. They've also had a game to try and warm up. They've also lost that series jam and so they want to go they want to gonna go back and redeem themselves to, to get a point on the board and again ultimately fight for that prize which is remaining or to fight your way into the top four at the end of week three yeah it's it, there's a lot to be playing for not just the spots on the top of it, but also some cash prize as well uh yep. every single team right now is guaranteed some sort of a cash prize already but Getting in the top four guarantees, going to LAN and fighting for even bigger prize pools. So really, in, in every team's mind, uh, and I'm pretty sure that every single team has come into this tournament with just one aim only, just play as best as we can. Some obviously set different targets than the other ones. If we eye is, we'll consider anything but a top top two, I'd say, uh, disaster, then for someone like Mind Games or the Scam Esports, just getting to land would be a great uh, occasion. So now they will be fighting for exactly that as we are waiting for specifically uh, the Mind Games to appear on the field. Scam Esports already here, already. And I think they should be fighting with, with, with some fair word that we perhaps haven't seen them in game number one. Yeah, I think we're, we're waiting on MacGyver. And we're waiting on Pumpkin Digger, who I believe has to change his name again. <laughs> I don't know why he changes his name back. Surely it'd be easier to keep it as Pumpkin Digger for the, for the purposes of taking part in the BESL Season 3. But there you go. We, we await their arrival with, with bated breath. What are we thinking, Jam? Do you think we're finally going to see that mythical Game 5? Yes, this is a game that definitely looks like one of them. I predicted the similar scenario for the our initial game, Spectre versus Scavenge. Uh, but it was a different Spectre this week. Spectre that find themselves um, again just, just leading the charge. Here it's two closely matched teams in similar situation in a well, in a, just uh, similarly matched as is. So game number five might as well appear on our screens. And yeah, this this is why this is one of the reasons why we have chosen this as the match of the week. Just how close the margins could be between Scavenge and uh, Mind Games Esports should 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 uh, should be for some great Rocket League on our screen. And obviously, for then again, a lot is being decided since already Scavenge Esports have dropped down the game. 
and a lot of uh, hopscotching and, and leaf frogging will be happening uh, by the end of this day. I believe we are ready to go. We don't want to keep our audience waiting any longer. And neither do the players. Here it is then, your match of the week. Scavenge Esports up against Mind Games Esports. In the short term, at least, for a place in our top four in the battle for Hypertown. It is Scavenge in the blue. Mind Games in the orange. And we're picking up the play here with Frosty. Keo into the middle. Frosty shot on target in the sub. Linkarino, let's see how he plays in place of Anchorman, usually for Mind Games, Gustaz. An early save, short to give confidence. Linkarino, once again, towards Pumpkin Digger, shot goes wide. MacGyver, up and off the backboard, Frosty. On the counter-attack now, looks to get it round Pumpkin Digger through the corner. Keo up high, Linkarino once again meets the ball. Kikis, back into the corner. And MacGyver is going to throw this one up once again. One thing you can definitely give Scavenge Esports is the speed with which they're playing. They started in a high gear at the very beginning and didn't slow down. Even the Kickass is currently finding himself at the same pace as the rest of his teammates. But a wonderful shot not found by MacGyver. Perfect opportunity for my games to open up the scoring. But Kickass stays calm and clears the ball. Uh, that, was, uh, that was the whiff of a man who's used to setting up. Not scoring himself. Speaking of, downfield, Keo straight to Kikis. Great in pass play. Kikis once again, perhaps looking for the Doomsy Dish. Didn't have enough boost. Had too much momentum to do anything with that. Frosty. Down off the wall. Linkarino. No challenge. Gets it past one. Frosty. Straight to Pumpkin Digger. Has a bit of boost to work with off the backboard. Great touch to boom the clearance downfield. Frosty misses the touch. Keo open net to aim for. Bar down ski. And Keo sneaks it in under. Just shy of two minutes into this game jam. And we have our first goal to Scavenge. Scavenge has rung that crossbar with Pumpkin Dinger flying in. That was a last ditch effort for him. And even that didn't help. Mind game some conceding first. This is a completely different story, Air League. Right now on the field, and the kickoff almost is not going the way of Scam G Sports. Right now on the field, Scam G Sports are looking like the strongest of the two teams and up by a pretty big margin. That's two KO setting up Frost. That duo works as well. Mind games who are perhaps not caught mining their own business. And all of a sudden, that MacGyver miss is really starting to to play on the mind how different a game would we been looking at if he'd been able to just put that one away it was literally uh hit the ball and it'll go into the net scenario criminal and almost three nil there is kikis wastes an opportunity pumpkin digger running a, a dc's the flash car really living up to their names as dc superheroes i think we've got the batmobile we've got the flash Linkarino, kind of the odd one out. I guess you would have to be as a sub, wouldn't you? Halftime comes and goes. And again, opportunities being created by this Mind Games squad, but no penetration to make the goals actually come through. Pumpkin Digger off the backboard. Good challenge win from Linkarino. Pumpkin Digger taking out Keo in net. MacGyver looking to make up, redeem himself, but Kikis... The good challenge. And now on the counter-attack. Frosty on target. Pumpkin Digger with a late save. And Keo now looking to get it around the corner. MacGyver again away. And Linkarino. Is this the opportunity they were looking for? No, again. Keo with a late save. And no matter what mind games seem to do, uh, Jam, they can't make the breakthrough. Nope, and I think it's in a big way it thanks to Scavenge Esports moving so much faster around the field and not killing that pace down, plus making all the right decisions. No, not, not a single one of these is taken haphazardly. No, they know exactly what they're doing, not taking any extra risks, and as a result, their defense is just squeaky clean. Pumpkin Digger, again, good pass. The passing plays are not the problem here for Mind Games. 
It's the shots, and again, another one going wide from MacGyver. Choking just a little in the final third. There's one minute remains. Not a completely irreparable scenario here for Mind Games, but time waits for no man or Rocket League player. Pumpkin Digger tries to get the clearance, but it's another shot going high. Pumpkin Digger, weak clearance once again from Mind Games' top scorer. A save in the end from Linkarino, kind of a non-event really. And I, I, I don't even have anything to say. 3-0. Well, I do have something to say about it, and that is MacGyver. Too far out, not deep enough in the net, with no chance to in any way affect that play. Even with Keke staying under the ball and sort of not not affecting the play at all. Perhaps even that threw uh, MacGyver in net just a little bit, trying to figure out what on earth Scam Sports is doing. And I can easily tell what most Scam Sports is currently doing. They're winning, they're winning convincingly. And Linkarina put themselves on the board with 20 seconds remaining. Won't change my opinion about that. That was just a small blip and a great block by Pumpkin Digger as well. Plus throwing a little bit of confusion in between the players of Scam Sports. That could have been easily a demolition or two as Pumpkin Digger was rotated. Very nice finish. They they might want to consider putting Linkarino up in more of those striking positions if he's the one person who can get it on target today. Although that's a key kiss again. A, another open net opportunity goes a begging. Not that there'll be too much time to worry about that now. As I said it, it waits for no Rocket League player. And Frosty's going to just feather this one down to the floor and scavenge esports. Uh, certainly in game number one at least. Responding in the best way to their loss against Spectre in game number one this week. They pick up a 3 will uh, they pick up a 3-1 victory, I should say, rather, and go 1-0 up in the series. That was a lovely showcase from Scavenger Sports. Just in a matter of what one series that we had on our screens, they come back swinging. It is actually that was a two series because Spectre then played a post-game strong, and then we saw Ram Ranch versus yes. uh the backflip boys. But wow. I still feel like the biggest change come off the fact that Scavenge Esports uh, picked up the speed of their play and they were comfortable with it, not really losing uh, losing it on the field. And another point is Kikis suddenly slotted in. He made changes to his own play. He is slightly back, not taking as many attempts, not being the hero, because previously being the hero constantly found himself in double committing positions with his teammates. Now... He's finally that full-fledged third player that helps his team. And man, that the improvement is visible with the naked eye, I feel. Mm -hmm. They look to like a, a heck of a lot more... It's like they've already played today, Jam. It's like they've already played today. And I'm glad to see it, certainly. Dare I say... Games won't. <laughs> well, they're seeing it with their own eyes, just from a slightly yeah, different yeah. angle than us, our league. But dare I say, momentum? Oh, wait, it will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steer clear of that word for now, because right. there have been, there have been two series worth since then. It's not exactly, it's not exactly like Spectre, where we went straight from one series into another. We see a three-nil sweep, then, then we talk about momentum. Spectre's the momentum boys today. And uh, good start, at least here from Mind Games. Pumpkin Digger forcing two into the commitment on defense. Oh, a miss there from Pumpkin Digger, though, and Frosty continuing the play. Dangerous situation. How did that not go in? Uh, that was as bad a miss as MacGyver had in game number one. And this quick thinking from Pumpkin Digger, just stopping the ball down. This time, though, killing the ball didn't work out for Linkarino, who gives it to Kikis. Rotations are working through. Look at that. Frosty lines up. Kick us pretty fast on that follow-up. Could have been even closer if um, if the speed was even higher. But he'll take that as well. Scavenge Esports using the mistakes by Mind Games by being proactive, being upfront. MacGyver. It's going to be Frosty away downfield. And continuing the play, but the challenge comes in. Ball goes over to the far wall. Kyo gets there first. Inward pass to Kikis. And Carino gets involved. Frosty now. And the ball remaining in this orange half. A miss from Kikis. Gives possession to MacGyver. 
Pumpkin Digger. This is really the wrong way around, and Frosty takes advantage. Booming clear is downfield. Open net potentially. MacGyver gets back in time. Gets the save and gets the clearance. Here comes Pumpkin Digger once again. MacGyver maybe look. Uh, he was caught in two minds. He wants to go for the demo, and he saw the play developing behind him. Ended up coming to nothing, of course. Frosty there winning the 50 50 once again. And MacGyver with the low profile of that Batmobile completely missing the ball with the clearance beckoning. Kikis there on the inside. It's Frosty over to the sidewall once again. And finally, the ball escapes the orange half. Keo goes around in circles, not really sure what to do with it. Hands it down to MacGyver. Challenge from Kikis. Linkarino challenged by Frosty. This defense from Scavenge is outstanding, Jam. And some passing plays as well. Look at that. Control is in their hands. If only they would play just dial it down just a little bit and play a little bit more confident, a little bit more slower in the defense, since that's wicked clear by Kia off the wall, using everything, but immediately giving the ball to mind games, didn't have to happen. He had all the time in the world, but decided to just go a little bit faster on it, and mistakes were made. Scavenge Esports still with the control of this one. Kikis, oh, sorry, uh, Kio and Frosty are trying to find themselves on the field and find themselves more often than not. And Ball is almost never finding their way into the blue half at all. Backboard defense has been brilliant as well. Linkarino offered a free shot. Goes high. Goes for the second touch. It's... Oh! It was lingering as it made its way towards the net. And Pumpkin Digger trying to force it home. It was good defense once again from Scavenge. Finding a bit more confidence are this Mind Games squad. Two minutes left to find an equalizer. Downfield, it's MacGyver with another miss. Pumpkin Digger there, met by Kikis. Linkarino, great. Oh, look at that. The demo from Pumpkin Digger as well. MacGyver missing in action. And this works. It will almost work out for Mind Games. First, a threat of a demolition or a bump in front of that. Then a pure demolition. But Scavenge Esports still managed to hold on. They're still meeting mind games quite often. Er, so er, early enough that all of the shots that mind games are taking from a distance don't even count as shots. Because Scavenge Esports just nip them in the butt and not allow mind games to do much. Double commit, almost a triple commit with Kyo coming in. And this could have been carried through. But it didn't work out for Scavenge in this time. Now to make sure they return back into the net safe. Oh, great bump by Kikis. Completely disrupting Linkarino's clearance. Now it's just a single minute remaining as Pumpkin Digger helps that one towards the blue net. Kikis on the response. Keo looking to help it towards net. Great save by Linkarino. I don't think it's I don't think any blame can be laid on his shoulders for the performance of mind games so far. I think he's performed pretty admirably, to be honest. But that said, everyone at fault there, Jam. There's just a one to well. Really, you can't blame Pumpkin Digger. Pumpkin Digger had no time to return back. But Pumpkin Digger himself was not seen in this game at all. The player that we expect to be at the forefront, scoring, making shots, has been made quiet by the scavenge esports side. And without their best player, mind games are finding themselves in a horrible situation coming in into the game number three. 30 seconds still remaining our league, but Scavenge Esports have shown just how well they can cling to the game and do the pressure, or just use the pressure um, against someone like Mind Games. You know what I really like as well is they seem to have implemented a lot of fixes. They've learned from that Spectre game, haven't they? There's no more of the uncertainty. There's, there's no more of the worry. They are so confident in their play. They're closing down shots beautifully. And they've made this now 2-0 lead in the series look effortless. Uh, mind games, no real major opportunities to speak of since that MacGyver open net miss. Apparently they have five shots on target in that game. I don't quite believe it. I I think that... Pff, I just think the scavenge have been, have been brilliant. And... Mind games really have to come up with a plan B a plan B here, otherwise. Three nil sweeps are beckoning. Yeah, not every single team comes into a game with a plan B. Sometimes you just rely on something of like like we are oh, we know how we usually play. Let's just play like that. If things suddenly go not your way, 
Now uh, the panic sets in, then you start trying doubting yourself, and as a result, it doesn't help anyone's game, and everything just falls apart. Scavenger esports have adjusted, but they had a break in between their games. Mind games, this is their first and only game today, and they came into this one with a little bit of confusion. Could it be that Augustus was that? deciding factor for mind games uh, the anchor player without him the mind games are just floating aimlessly over the sea uh what do you think Arlik? is that that big of a difference to lose gustus in this week it's so difficult to tell as well because i stand by what i said link arena is not playing badly by any stretch of the imagination but what stands out to me is that he's an offensive minded player and you're replacing a very defensively minded player and that is perhaps the one thing that's betraying this mind game squad as i said one of the few squads where each of these players has one set role they're not multitasking with each other they know what they're meant to do and if you remove one out of a square peg and try to put a circle in there that just doesn't work and it's left their defense wide open and it's left their attacks if not too clogged up then completely lacking because nobody knows where they're supposed to be sometimes if you basic... ram sorry sir early sometimes if you do ram the pack uh strongly enough it does fit but right now force as they might my games couldn't force it through the scavengers esport defense properly in the previous game and right now they get conceded upon since, man, Scavenge Esports know how to push themselves. Jam, they're in the same position that Scavenge was up against Spectre. They look like they've lost their way. And maybe, maybe if, maybe if Mind Games had had a game before or a series beforehand to get used to this trio, we'd be seeing them winning this game instead. But you have to ride the smooth waves along with the rough league play. Sometimes these situations just happen. And sometimes you've got to react quicker to the potential forces that go against you. I said he was an offensively minded player. And Linkarino has at least given a lifeline to mind game. 1-1. Mind games catch scavenge esports in the net with a series of mistakes. I think Frosty fell off the post. My question, big question was scavenge esports looking so great in the series, how close they are from uh, disaster? How how much do you need to sort of rub off to find out the old scavenge esports underneath? And right now, seemingly that margin is pretty thin. Frosty <laughs> attempted to pass back to Kikis, who was completely on a different page. Keo able to stop the shot. Linkarino not able to get it past Frosty. Frost, you're not able to get it past Pumpkin Digger, though. The defense is holding out. Yo. It's MacGyver. Weak clearance. Frosty. Gets it past two. MacGyver and Pumpkin Digger double committing. Frosty off the top of the cage. Goes a little bit too far back, actually. And misses his clearance and touch. And MacGyver might be feeling that he shouldn't really claim this goal. Because it was a complete mess up in defense. It's Scavenger Sports returning back. They were trying to set up a play off the wall. Uh, I believe that was Frosty had the right idea. Don't just roll it on the wall. Try to separate it from the wall and drop it down in some way. Set it up for maybe for your teammates. But since both of the Scavenger Sports players find themselves in the middle of the field, not having enough time really or angle to go up for it, the retreat back was disastrous to say the least and then of course one missed touch by Kikis who tried really hard to get back just sends the ball barreling down off the shot of that guy oh there's more and more mistakes I'm noticing coming out from scavenge now as well missed shots backflips and the more that they start to struggle the more you can see mind games starting to find their feet great block by Kikis but Keo was too slow to get the shot in Frosty with a strong ball downfield, but straight into the path of Linkarino. Free opportunity. 
just goes wide. Pumpkin Digger up high. Is there a follow up? No. Frosty with a great touch. MacGyver. Then Carino again helps the ball onwards. Double commit. And Frosty finally away. Is this going to turn into an attack now? Frosty over one. MacGyver gets the demo. And through the smoke, the ball emerges. And just about getting away with it are mind games. Just barely, just barely, because the attack is back on. After weak defense, Cavan G Sports find themselves in the offense, and that is the part of their play that really has improved compared to the previous series. They are feeling like fish in the water when it comes to seizing mind games, but they only have one minute to do so, and this has been an incredibly low shooting game. And even so closer, a low scoring game. So as a result, Scavenge Sports have all the chances to bring it back. Up high is Pumpkin Digger there. Oh, he is, but he also misses. That would have probably been game over as I noticed that Frosty is AFK. So down a goal and down a man. It gets it goes from bad to worse for Scavenge. And there's the follow on home from Pumpkin Digger. With a man AFK, I'd say this one's as good as done, Jam. This is, yeah, the handicap is way too big for Scavenge Esports to overcome. And while I personally have some really good games when one of my teammates have disconnected, it, not in this situation. Mind games have this under the control, but it was such a narrow game. Uh, really, by the, by the point that mind games have scored two goals, they only had one shot to their name that we directed by kick as just set, send the ball, uh, send the ball without giving any credit to the original score. Scavenge Sports themselves, I think all of the shots that they had, three shots, were all on Frosty. So as a result, if you don't consider that goal uh, scoring spree by Mind Games after they played only versus two players, neither of the team broke even five shots in this one. And as Kyo gets one in, this could really come in handy two minutes, uh, even though, like 30 seconds ago. Right now, it almost be not worth it by Scavenge Sports. Yeah, a reminder, of course, that mind games. I'm not losing my mind. This is game three, right? Indeed. Yes. So mind games, in order to win this series, need the reverse sweep. Good way to start going about it, certainly. Admittedly helped with the, uh, the brief disconnection of Frosty. The league rules are league rules. They had to continue playing on. And the lifeline is extended for another game. We are back to a 2-1 series. And yeah, boy, oh boy, that was a scrappy game lacking any quality. The fact of the matter is that Scavenge Esports scored two goals with one shot on target, Jam. <laughs> well, officially... kind of says it all. Well, officially, I think it's four shots since Frosty's disconnection. Dropped all of his stats, including oh, one of yes. the goals that he has scored. And, of course, all of his shots as well. I do believe he was hitting on three before disconnection. So it's not as horrible as it looks, our league. But the, the point still stands. It was a scrappy game. Neither of the teams could really get to the other one's net. And I was praising Scam G Sports blocking mind games uh, all the time and before they could even make a proper shot. Here, seemingly, both of the teams... We're doing exactly that while not getting any results on the other side of the field. It was, it, it came uh, into a high scoring game really by the end of it. But again, that aided with some technical difficulties from the side of Scavenge Esports. Now, the important thing for Scavenge, with how well they have looked in game number one and number two, get that feeling, run with it. Because in game number three, Scavenge didn't look like, uh, like run out of steam just a little bit. And the old scavenge sports shown underneath all that fancy exterior with great goals with great rotations. They cannot allow themselves to fall back down because if all of a sudden we see the same double commit or overly aggressive, why did they even make that decision scavenge? They're done for. So game number four. And MacGyver taking out Frosty, arguably the most dangerous player for scavenge. Dangerous ball, loitering. Not dealt with, but it goes wide. Scavenge immediately on the offensive here. Frosty. Then Carino with the challenge. And Frosty completely buffeting him out of the game. MacGyver gets it past two Scavenge players, but Frosty's there lying in wait. 
Looking to help that one on. The angle betraying him. Is this one going to go in? No, MacGyver getting it off the backboard. And Linkarino not able to get it past Key Kiss. And that's a freebie. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And it's still Kikis with the right rotations. Wow. He went for it. Really, it, in almost in every single universe, that was an easy clear for Link. Not this time. And Kikis reads that specific universe well enough to challenge it and get the shot on target, uncontested. As things stand then, mind games, not the end of the world. It's for Scavenge, they move into the top four, as things stand, of course. Kikis. You can see Keo ahead trying to disrupt the, the defenders, but Linkarino went up high, not having any of it. Frosty, need to get a second touch off there. Kikis and Keo not really looking to commit. Maybe suggesting a bit more of a defensive-minded game number four from the scavenge perspective. Pumpkin Digger. Oh, wow, great challenge from Frosty, but MacGyver was in immediately. Kikis again, another easy challenge win. MacGyver completely misses. Frosty on target. Linkarino once again forced into late defensive action to prevent another easy goal. And the mind games are now surviving barely. They had no action whatsoever on the other side of the field. No shots. And while Scam G Sports can get a ton of shots themselves, this is not the Backflip Boys situation where we're hitting 10 shots per game every single game. But it's Scam G Sports in control, having to force mind games to really commit everything they possibly have. And while Scam G Sports can use that like three player commit, let's say, it's still not working out for them. Oh my. Now it seems like Keo, nope, he jumps, he's alive. Thank God. I was feeling worried for Scam G Sport at that one moment. Don't want to suffer two disconnects in the space of one game, certainly. One series, I should say, rather. Get my terminology right. Say from Pumpkin Digger. Boom down field. Pumpkin Digger continues to play off the backboard. MacGyver. Ball goes up high. Who's there to meet it? In target almost from Linkarino. It crashes off the crossbar. Millimeters away from an equalizer. Linkarino a little bit too far forwards and has to retreat now. Gets the full 100 boost using the top of the cage. Great play from Linkarino, throwing it straight back into the blue half. MacGyver misses the challenge. Pumpkin Digger on the retreat. keo has got an empty net to aim for and manages to miss. Another weak peer, uh, clearance sorry, from Pumpkin Digger. MacGyver can only find the corner. And finally, that counter-attack coming through. And it's still Linkarino... This time, actually, Pumpkin Digger flying in from the corner. Someone who has been really a goal scorer. But my god, they keep on putting the ball higher and higher. That crossbar must be broken after a 10 by Linkarino. But yet still, they can keep the shots down. And all the opportunities by Mind Games. They have beaten Scam G Sports multiple times now. But the goal is slightly lower or slightly to the side. They just can't sure. find it. Linkarino stopped by who? But Tikis. Tikis. He is making wondrous plays this game. And the more and more that the ball remains not going into the goal, the quicker oh, no. time seems to go down. Another defensive mishap on the scavenge end. This pressure relentless from mind games, but still unable to find the breakthrough. Very, very similar story. To game number one, MacGyver looks to go around the corner. Pumpkin Digger can only force it over to the side. Frosty, rotating that car beautifully in the air to get the clearance. It can only find MacGyver, though. Pumpkin Digger now goes up high. Ball over to the side. Misses his second touch. MacGyver was there. Infield. Linkarino flails at it. And Pumpkin Digger with a crucial miss. This is Keo now on the offensive. Gets it past Linkarino. Here goes Frosty. Double tap. Waits for him, but again off the crossbar. Is this match sponsored by Excel? I have my doubts. Uh, the past game strong, the spirit of past game strong just creeps in and man, is going in. Four seconds, three seconds. Mind games have pretty much stopped. They're waiting oh. for a set up from the corner. A tattoo is strong for Ren Carino. But just like you said previously, our league, out of the old players on the Mind Games esports side, one player I can't possibly blame is the sub Link Carino himself. He came in strong. Mm. In game number three, or rather, this was by this time game number four, he was trying to carry his team almost single-handedly and was getting this close. 
But we mentioned it so many times today. It's a team game. You need the whole squad. And it, just like Super was trying to carry uh, Ram Ranch, it wasn't to be for Lincolnia to get mind games out of this bog. Scavenge Sports bounced back. And just in a way of how post game strong was a Phoenix rising from the ashes in the game uh, in a previous a previous week after really not showing in week number one. I feel like the change that happened to Scavenge Esports uh, between their first match of the series, uh, first match of the day, rather, and their last match of the day was immense. It was almost a completely different squad. And I, every single time, I hope that the team can adjust. This was one of those rare times that the team did so. Scavenge Esports, my, my uh, uh, most valuable team pick of today. It was a. It was definitely the most tense week. I feel as well. Uh, no exception of Ram Ranch being swept. No sweeps. We still the game five still eludes us. But we had three series going to game number four. Uh, we had some brilliant stories in Spectre rising up the order in Scavenge bouncing back and rising up the order themselves. Uh, but before we take a little look at the final table, I think we've got to talk about our player of the week jam. And uh, I, I feel like I'm going to start off this discussion. It might be a short one. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know your thoughts. But I've got to give a shout out to my boy Premier. I think he was absolutely crucial and outstanding in that Spectre squad. A major, major factor in what sees them up into the top three now. Honestly, for me, it's either Samic or Premier as well, because Scavenge, uh, rather Spectre, apologies. This was their week to either take the all the laurels or crush and burn. It was a middle ground as well, but um, I'm I'm talking in absolutes here. And really, it's it must be someone from a Spectre. Uh, yes, Misko was still there, but man. I'm, I'm, I'll go with you, Arlik. I'd, I'd go with Primea as well. Uh, there was a big, important uh, series of important plays that Primea did in game number three, could be mm. uh, which which happened straight after uh, Spectre lost a game to uh, Scavenge Esports. Well, Frosty and Kio stepped up themselves. Uh, the rest, though, if if I had to sort of uh, pick a runner-up that wasn't on Spectre, um, it does seem to be like a Super. First of all. Had yep. a perfect perfect week. The only problem is the team wasn't exactly with him at that point. And of of course, uh, just now uh, we had some uh, great chunks. Uh, Frosty, yeah, for really, really Frosty and and Keel, and they're still that team that just one two punch duo that helps Cam Sports to progress. Plus Kickus, while not having the greatest of the starts, and in a way they might have been better off of Ragus. Kikis came in in his own strength at the end of the day. So we are halfway through our season. Let's take a look at the standing, shall we? And keep in mind, of course, some offset teams, uh, no more so than the backflip boys. They've only played one game so far. And uh, so again, it's a bit of a faux position. We won't really know where they are properly until they catch up with everyone. But for now, at least, backflip boys once again lead the league. With a three to one ratio, Weite, of course, didn't play this week. They dropped down to second. Scavenge and Spectre both moved their way up into the top four. Spectre from eighth up to fourth. Uh, Scavenge, of course, winning out in that battle of the teams that could go into the top four. Uh, Mind Games, the losers in that particular uh, encounter. Remaining in the midfield, down to sixth. Of course, professional ball chasers as well, falling out of the top four by value of not playing uh, for two weeks of the season now. Post-game strong, I feel a little bit hard done by to be down in seventh. Ram Ranch, not so much. They now find themselves a long way behind in the eight. It is going to take a monumental effort. It is going to take four games in a row for them to be able to even have a chance of qualifying for LAN. Uh, the story continues next week, Jam. And uh, I honestly can't wait. I, I, I think we're really set for a, a brilliant second half of the season. Yeah, it is. We, we already are having some great days. Today was maybe some of the best Rocket League we've possibly seen. Yes, uh, we didn't have V8 or professional ball chasers playing. 
but it didn't really take away from from all the action that we've been having to the the tooth and nail from from all of the teams and i'm coming out of this with some exciting that's currently bubbling in me right it is time to bid you adieu then from us too i've been ira leak he's been jar jammer